the process where residents say, hey, I want to have a sidewalk in place. Can you help me? That case, if, if an owner says, "Can you grind my sidewalk?" We'll bill you the we'll bill you the rate. Of our guy. Sure, sure. Maybe, maybe we start doing that. Hopefully, that. Yeah. Well, I, I think I. What do we do to? I, I would like to open that up actually, because I think Sutton would be the perfect example. If if he, you know, that's something he's obviously talked to me about as well. Why wasn't my grind? You know, and I explained to him it's because it's his tree, not a street tree. So why can't we just start doing that? If, if he requests it. We bill, we get an estimate of what it would be, and we bill him directly, you know, for the, for the. Throwing it out there to you guys, why not? Hey, sure. Well, why not? Really because, because the reality is most homeowners will not make the phone call to get it done independently. But if they can call the village and we can say, look, it's going to cost, let's just say $200, whatever. I think there are plenty of homeowners who say, okay, great. Let's just go ahead and do it then. And then we build them, and then it's a safer walking environment for everybody. And it is, you know, for it just seems like a win win to me, you know, rather than you independently having to call a company that does the sidewalk grinding, having to have them come out, they take a look, they give you an estimate, you know, and then it gets lost, you know, on your desk of, you know, in so the We're just talking about grinding, right? Just Basically. grinding, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be I think it's should time for many. If we if we identify one like like in the case of the people that tripped and say it wasn't on our street tree, I think in that case we should notify the homeowner you need to do this within sixty days. If not, the village will do it and put it on your tax bill, or we can bill you. I mean, do you know what I mean? If, if it's creating a tripping yeah. hazard, yeah. And because ultimately, if somebody fell, they're naturally going to come to the village and potentially try to sue the village, and we're still going to cost us money to defend ourselves potentially. Right. So, no. Municipalities will do that once in a while. Village Lancaster will send their code enforcement officer around mm -hmm. and literally cite it like at the house. Yeah. It, it would be every single house, just about. I, I went through that exercise and just to, for a quarter of magnitude of what we were talking about. I think it was just about every single house in the village mm -hmm. had at least one somewhere within their 50 foot right away. That was, yeah, mm -hmm. no problem. Yeah. And you get situations yeah. like I noticed on North Long when we walked up that way, some of those sidewalks. Slabs are just so deteriorated yep. that grinding isn't going to help those anymore. Yep. Yeah. But that would be ultimately the homeowner's responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Yes. they are the homeowners. Yeah. Right. And they're bad on the street too. <laughs> well, they're 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 bad on a yeah, lot good. of streets. Yeah. I mean, it's just you know, that, that goes back to, okay, we cited you, and we we should have a, a definitive program in place, right? Where where the homeowner then can say, help me. Mm -hmm. Get enough of those helps, and we contract it out. Yeah, I mean, it seems like this is the kind of thing that you we could have some sort of like a a resident portal kind of thing on the, on the website where you could report a heap sidewalk or whatever, um, and it would have a couple of options, and that would trigger mm -hmm. like Tim or Dick Ben or somebody going out to observe the condition and then make a determination: is that ours? Is it theirs? You know. Because then the other thing is that if we are, if we're going to conglomerate 
X number of sidewalk replacements on an annual basis, and we're going to somehow figure out some metric to split the costs, that's a chunk of money we have to budget. So there'd have to be like a, it'd have to be like a, a drop dead date, right? X number of requests for sidewalk replacements by like now, by now, yeah, by, by January 1st or fill in the blank, right? So they could be budgeted for the following year and then, you know. Yeah. Are you recommending that we share the cost? That's what you said. But, no, no, it depends on. Well, it depends on what it is, but I mean, but that, that there's, there was also this discussion about like, you know, is there, is there a benefit to the community to share the cost? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm just asking, is that what you're recommending? I, Yes, I guess. I we have an answer to the question, right? Right. Well, right. right. I mean, because right now, right now, the way the code is written, it's like we can decide that you need a new sidewalk and you're going to go do it, right? I mean, right. And, and your cost. I mean, that's, yes. that's that's kind of ridiculous too, right? right. So, um, I, I guess the point is, is that it, if it would have to, there'd have to be some sort of like way to meter it out, right? There'd have to be some basis of need. Established, you know, like well, I could, I could decide that I want a new sidewalk, and I can go put it in my new sidewalk. I can just do that, right? But if I'm a retiree who, you know, is aging in place, and I'm not, you know, I'm not sitting on a pile of money, and you know, I, but I know that my sidewalk's bad, and I just fell on it the other day when I was out gardening. Like, is there somewhere I can go to request aid? Right. And. You know, it would be in the best interest of the village to keep that person in their house, to keep the the, 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 the sidewalk safe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if there was some sort of metric that we could establish that, you know, based on income level or whatever. Right. Can CDBG funding? Well, I don't want that. Probably. We shouldn't do Oh, no, but no, we can't because we're out of the tax. We're out of the... Oh, yeah, we're not in the, the, the zone. That's exactly what the CDBG money is supposed to be. Should be, right, but we can't, which is unfortunate. Yeah. I guess it becomes, you know, my, I mean, my thought is in that case or in that situation, then even if they can't afford to pay for their half of it, right, then do, because we can put it on their tax bill, right? right? Then you, then you offsite them that year. So can we do it over a four year payment, payment plan, basically? I don't know if that creates more work up front or if we can legally do that. So, <laughs> you know, I, know. Yeah, but, I, mean, I, don't, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but one slab of concrete on a sidewalk is about 200 bucks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So for us to do it, for the for us. To I thought to even like the contract. No, 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 it's more contract. Way more contract. Way more. Just one slab. Yeah, no, the contractors yes. aren't going to want to do it. Well, yeah, you have got to find someone that's working in I mean, your you, area. You wanna, right. right. You want to yeah. do you want to do the full frontage, and right. even then, that's going to be. I know a couple of years ago they had. Contractor that would do anybody in that area for 150. That's cheap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but we should hire them. <laughs> <laughs> that was years ago. That was a few yeah. years back. But, but you're right to your point. I mean, if everybody had some and it was, uh, it ended up, we could say it's 150 and you've got this when you need to replace it. We can do it for you. Here's the cost and we'll do them all at once. Right. Well, and that's, that's the hope is that theoretically by getting, by aggregating this into a massive project, you get. Better price. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and you get a contract. I'm trying to remember when we did it before, after our uh, Save Our Bucks to School project, we did slab replacements throughout the village, and they were more than 200 bucks a pop for both elements. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's almost in the 450 range. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Preventing wage. I think even yeah, before you. Traffic and safety, mm -hmm. um, signage, you know, there's a lot of elements yeah. that go into it. Yeah. So, so I know we're not going to be able to decide on this today, but um, what about that missing sidewalk on Oak Grove? Where did that land? Or is that going to? That would be part of the grant. Yeah, that's what we were. Looking that's for. right. I, that's what I I know we're hoping for that. But um, okay, well we'll wait and see what happens then. Okay. But would this become an administrative nightmare for you if you started doing the, is, is yeah, it? Is yeah, it would be it would be just a lot of coordination between myself and. Him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to go out to verify to sure. you, know, yeah. you know what is the threshold you know i was going to say on the threshold should we not do like a like you said if it's quarter of an inch or there's there should be some metric to say that you're tripping you're creating a tripping at a quarter of an inch gap 
and that's that's the threshold for the homeowner to do something that's their responsibility. Well, quarter of an inch is everybody. It's a half ratio. Right. Is that half an inch? Yes. Yeah. So that's my point. Is like if it's if your gap if it's heaving more a half an inch or greater, then you've got to get it done. And you know, we're only doing this level this level slab. We're not doing this one because you don't like the color. Right. Of course. <laughs> that's, that's where the subjective nature of this comes in. Like, I don't like this type of concrete. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are we going to replace it? No, we're not going to replace it. So, that's where, you know, we have to come in and say that that person, no, we can only do the ones that are heat. Right. Yeah, that's the level of that. So, yep. it's all baked into, into yeah. this, the, you know, which I think is a grand plan. Kind of grand, to... And it does exist in other municipalities around the country in many different forms. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's, it's an admirable goal for us to. Well, let's let's work do. towards that then. Let's work towards getting into place something that is created in that manner, but not just what we yeah. currently have with the code, which is like your sidewalks messed up and you have to fix it. What's let's the criterion for going from grinding to replacing? Thickness. The thickness, yeah, the degree of uh, differential. Okay, so if, it, if it's not this lab, if it's, if it's broken. That's going to lean more towards replacement. Yeah. Versus, you know, you got a half inch lift. That's easy to grind down. And and like if you know, like your neighbor, we ground four inches off, but it leaves a slab that's going to fall apart soon. And so that is noted. I, I have those yeah. catalog. That so then who would? Those. So yeah. So then you would come back. Right. Because, because those are tree. Those because are tree it's cars. right. Right. The only yeah. thing we're doing are tree cars. So I is know. The, yeah. Is, is the decision therefore if it's over half an inch? We're not going to grind. It should be replaced. No, 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 we'll grind. We'll grind up to three, four inches. Oh, really? And then come back and replace it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the problem is the slab's only four or five inches. Oh, well, I know. Why, why, why even grind something then? Because I, don't know I can't. I can't replace it necessarily in the time that it takes me to grind it. So it's a stopgap. It's just how to long get does it take to grind something like that, Ben? Uh, probably an hour and a half, two hours. Takes that long to bang it out. What's that? I said it would take that long just to, yeah, to pull the slab, to pull the slab and then, mm -hmm. you know, grade the fine grade and then get your concrete in and, and have a guy uh, form it and screed it and float it and then come back and uh, sweep it. You know, like you're talking a half a day to maybe a day, even depending on how the concrete trucks are running. Yeah, so, so, that so you're up usually two guys versus well, What we're talking about is either grind or see how many are out there, notify each of those homeowners. It's going to cost you this much and we'll pay for part of that and we'll have them all done sometime during construction season. Yeah, that's something yeah, like that. That sounds about right. Yeah. All right. Or do you apply? We're not, are we going to do it across the board? That's the, that's a, that's a very good question. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, it seems, it seems like because because we're we're in the gray area between the, between causes, right? So I mean, it's a it's a foregone conclusion that we're fixing anything that's heaved by our tree. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So now we're talking about taking that half step towards fixing things that aren't caused by our tree, which we shouldn't be paying for outright. Not, and, not according to code. And we should right. right. And Change we should code then. Well, right. And we shouldn't necessarily just be like, hey, we're, we're suddenly in the concrete sidewalk business, right? Exactly. But, but um, you know, but we are. We've done it before. But we've done it before. And I think if we're gonna right. if we're gonna go through this process of of you know notifying residents that hey, your sidewalk sucks, we should be prepared to not just be like, yup, and you have to fix it, right? Right? Because because all that does is engender ill will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, especially for the people who have just replaced their own sidewalk on their own dime. Right. But I think, is, is it a foregone conclusion that if you have 200 slabs replaced in year 2021, the cost per slab will be 25% or 50% less than an individual doing it? Is that a safe state? Safe state. It's a safe state, and I can't put an actual number to what that is. Volume discount is going to be. But I think you're definitely going to get a, a better rate than doing it. You know, okay, so, today I'm going to do yours. I'm going to call the contract, grab yours done. Then next week I'm going to do else. Those slides are going to be way more than doing all of them. 
I mean, no, it would make sense to have one massive job done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so we would tell the, the homeowner, we will do it and pay for 40% of it. Although we just pay for the administration to get it done, you're paying for the concrete and the work. Right, you the material mm -hmm. labor. We're, we're, yeah. we're, 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 we're the construction we're, manager. Yeah, we're coordinating this project for you, but you're paying for that. And you will benefit. And you, you will benefit from a major project being done at once. Yes, you, you will get a volume discount. But it comes down to how much and what. You know, that's 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 the legwork on my and, and Tim's end to, to say that slab, that slab, not that slab, that slab, not that that one. You know, we we can't just have people say, "I want my whole slab, my whole sidewalk replaced." No, this is our decision. But then again, maybe you could, because by the point we're already doing the contract well, administration, I, it's pretty easy to say A to B, you guys do it, done, you're paying that work. And, and well, and I was gonna, I was just going to say that, is that like if, if you're looking at it and you're saying five out of 10 are bad, you might as well do all. It's cheaper to do all of them anyway, you know? And if they're paying for the labor and materials, then it actually makes your life easier as a CM, let's say. Right. You know? But I, I can't tell you what that's going to cost right now. Of course not. All right. right. So we'll I don't. Discount that we could promise. That. We need. To, well, we're not going to figure this out today during the budget. I, I don't want to spend any more time right. on it. Fix your code. Let's move on. And... I think it's your first. Fix your code. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we work on exactly how we administer this. Mm -hmm. You know, looking so that next year when we sit here, mm -hmm. we say we've got 300 requests. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's going to cost. And we talk to the contractor. And now, yep. and now we go back to the resident. This is what it's going to cost. But you're mm -hmm. still in. Mm -hmm. You know, now you got. Right. right to decide if you want in or out mm -hmm. and then boom mm -hmm. okay i don't know if you're given that option uh i think you should because yeah. we're saying it should be replaced right and if you and don't want to opt be... into our program you're on your own right okay right. that's the option yeah there you go yeah. it's not opt out and do nothing right right you're going to get no, that's, cited that's good and then, you know if you don't do it in six months we're going to do it we're going to charge you a lot right more. yeah that makes sense yeah mm -hmm. So you have options. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. okay. All right. We'll figure that out. Uh, so yeah, we've gone through the repairs. We're at sidewalk. Uh, bumped our safety line. Up to the S35. Right. And then we're in the snow. Speaking of which, sidewalk plow needs to find its way into my quadrant of the neighborhood. Village. It's done Highland or Hurstfield. It's done. Worley, Maine, and Garrison. So it's gone around your quadrant. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, do you listen, stay in it's Maine? On Tuesday? I know. I did Main Street and the parks on Tuesday. That's how that's how long it takes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I guess so, just so that you understand it doesn't happen like that. Oh, you know? I know. And I, I, know. I would not never complain. You did my street once and I'm happy. I'm grateful. You know, we well, tried to hit honestly, the, the I know school. better once. I know, than I know. I understand the policy. I get it. I'm just yeah. saying, you know. Well, I guess that you it, know it should find done. its way in, in, know, this season exactly. sometime. Well, well you, you can come and drive it on the weekend. Main Street's important. The parks are important. The Main Street well, important I, parks, no, the I, safe routes, the, the yeah. school routes. You know, the, but I guess so. So here's the issue with the sidewalk plow because I've gotten a couple complaints this week, as you know. Um, our code says you have whatever it is 24 hours right i believe it is since the snowfall to clear your sidewalk so realistically to do all of the village of williamsville never gonna happen. it's never going to happen right no. so what 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 happens is though i think we are enabling people to not shovel their sidewalks which is then causing treacherous conditions for folks who are now forced to walk in the street so it just doesn't we somehow need to correct the code because to say in the code you have 24 hours, but then everybody's sitting there waiting for the sidewalk file to go by Monroe. Right. No, um, I'm just kidding. Right. I'm just no, kidding. I, that's not true. I, I, no, and I don't I don't think that's the reality. 80% of the people in the residential neighborhoods have done their sidewalks. Right. But yes. then we're still taking the plow down for like that 10%. Yeah. And I guess it's just kind of like I, I, I here's the thing. If it were me, I would have a fleet of sidewalk plows to adequately and expeditiously do the entire village, do Main Street parks, the, the, the priority route and all the streets, because then you are fairly delivering a service to all the taxpayers in the village. But what we currently have, I think one sidewalk plow was completely inefficient. And in hindsight, like I said, I think the way to do it would be to have a fleet 
of sidewalk plows if we're really wanting to give a fair service to all village residents because why should it go down my street right and not hit your street or your street or right? you know and this is a, a complaint that i'm hearing from residents like well, where's the sidewalk plow on my street just because i don't live on Right, so I guess that's something we should. And <laughs> throw me another seventy-five thousand. Well, I, I, I don't. But, yeah, I know. Right. But well, I'm saying when we budgeted for the one, we probably, in hindsight, yeah. should have done more than one. Well, is what I'm saying. Yeah. We really do need to. Yeah. We but do kind of need to, right? Yeah. right. So. But let me simply offer, and I'm being pedantic here. I mean, all right. Um, generally speaking, I see the sidewalk plow go down Monroe, or I see the evidence that it went down Monroe once a season mm -hmm. haven't seen it yet because we just sure. got seven, snow eight inches of snow the first time this year exactly everyone's freaking out and like we don't know what to do with this stuff anymore exactly <laughs> exactly and, and that's and that's the thing is that what, the first event of the year. What, what what happens what happens more often than not is we get snow and and by the time the sidewalk plow would theoretically make its rounds it's gone mm -hmm. Right, we get we get that cold, sure, warm, yeah. cold, warm, cold, warm. Right, so this is like the first protracted length of time where we've had sustained snow and cold and cold, mm -hmm. and and then worse yet is the fact that we've had a couple of back to back events. Yeah, snow, right, essentially. yeah. So so the guys are in the trucks. Mm -hmm. Right, the, the the general residents don't understand the process. Yeah. Right, and so like you know. But I simply bring it up because someone on next door commented, hey, you know, sidewalk cloud never goes down Monroe. Which is not true. Yeah. Which is not true. But it hasn't I missed this it. year. <laughs> so just saying, hey. Yeah. Oh, we're, hey. Well, let me ask you, how, how much time does it take to do the north side versus the south side? Just give me an estimate. It, generally, the, the, the estimate is it, it takes about four days with, to do the yeah, whole yeah. with, no, 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 with like, the yeah. V plow. That's the plow. That's the regular plow. I can't get through some of these streets now with the V plow because of the, that depth of snow. Wow. Oh, I didn't know that. I will, I will stop. I mean, the machine will, will has, if we tried it that Tuesday morning, we were trying to do streets, we did work. I had to throw the snowblower off. So now we're going at less than a walking pace. I went down Main Street and I had three people behind me waiting to get around me as they're walking through snow. Right. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know there was a yeah, equipment issue. issue. Oh, yeah. 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 And, you know, and then it's further complicated by the, you know, People say, oh, you haven't done Main Street. Well, that's because the plows just came through and threw everything back on the, on yeah. the sidewalk. So now I have to go back into the Main Street again, again. Mm -hmm. every single day. And same with Garrison, same with Evans, same mm -hmm. with right. Burley. Mm -hmm. You know, those streets that see, you know, yeah, that have you nasty yeah. stuff. Yeah. So that's where I'm focusing. That's where I'm targeting and trying to basically break holes so that you, you people in your quadrant can get out of your right, not shoveled area to get onto a sidewalk that's shoveled. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I won't even get into the equipment breakdowns and all the rest of it. There. Which people are shoveling their sidewalks. It's mm -hmm. not that people are standing there with their they're tapping. Oh, I'm not saying everything. Tapping their toe, yeah. looking down the sidewalk, no. wondering where everyone is. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, we had this discussion last year, you know, in the poly or maybe two years ago, that yes, we will do sidewalks no matter what, whether they're shoveled or not. I am deferring those that look really good versus those that look really bad. Mm -hmm. you, know, you got you got some bad actors where there's a lot of renters. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get Herschel Highland. Mm -hmm. um, and don't do it. We don't do it. So we, we did that first. It's like Evans Street. Right. Evans is Evans is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, well, should we add a second machine? We I, I Realistically, it. we need a second machine. Let's face it. I mean, what does that do to manpower needs? Yeah. Um, I could make it work. I'll get on the go <laughs> on the north yeah, side. You know, yeah. <laughs> Right. Another Everybody machine. takes a day, right? A plow day. Yeah. yeah, another machine would be very helpful because we, you know, we can even clearing our own sidewalks. Um, you know, the Glen Abs and the, the Rock Streets of the world um, in the parks. You know, we can hit those first without with machine A, and then machine B can be doing the residential stuff. Yeah. And then they can yeah. join up forces and go north. You're side. talking two B plows, or is that it? Yeah, two. Two side, yeah. We have a lot of. Um, you know, elderly people who really can't afford to hire somebody to do it. Oh yeah, and yeah. you just can't do it. A lot, a lot of single people. You know, is there a, um, is there a, 
different piece of equipment or a smaller piece of equipment that's kind of like our our plow light or something we've, we've gone through the various options and this is the best yeah, this scenario is, this thing is okay all right all right well, and you'll, you'll see that the town now has a multi-hog which is basically the same machine right um you'll see i see these types of machines being used a lot more by private contractors which tells me that they're probably a good good investment yeah. investment bit for the for what the work that we have to do a and multi -hog, is that a piece of equipment that does more is that what it is what's that the multi-hog what is that it does more it's than just, just snow it's the name of a machine oh that i see i thought maybe it did more than just snow yeah and, and this machine is like a swiss army knife it, you can put all sorts of attachments on the front put a chipper on a sweeper on oh, cool. a blower a mower you know the, the, I like that. the options are, are you know, it's a very flexible uh, machine we we haven't quite used it to its full potential yet um, well so okay so to that end is there mm -hmm. it, we're, we're probably not going to be able to put seventy five thousand dollars in here mm -hmm. for a new piece of equipment but is there are there attachments that we should be looking at purchasing for that equipment to use more annually. Yeah, and that's covered. Okay. So you, you're saying, well, why wouldn't, if we decided that it was a need that was lacking in the village, why wouldn't we put 75,000 in? Well, because we're currently $8,200 short of our of our budget. So it would be a massive chunk of money. It would have to be bonded or something. It wouldn't just be something we could pay in cash. Are there grants for that kind of thing? Mm, no, I have not seen. Mm. Can that be used by CDB2 funds? Equipment is no, not. I don't so. no. No. A source of money. Of if you want to park it in the section house, then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Most of we'll do the it. village is not <laughs> so bad. eligible for CDBG funding, anyways. Yeah, yeah. we're not. We are only eligible on historical building exteriors. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You want to talk about Bonnie for equipment, we can do that. I, I got to buy stuff, believe me. <laughs> All right, well, I mean, right, so well, we'll, 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 let's revisit that then. Let's okay. hit the other it's stuff. Yeah. So, so removal. Removal. Um, the only thing that went up was personal services. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, you can't look at that percentage because it, so the distribution is different than it was prior to the year. Yes. Okay, but more quickly, you think about the dump sum, right? They have robots. Uh, mm -hmm. The money's still got to go somewhere. And, yeah, uh, the guys for plows. Right, it, it, because it would just get moved to another personal mm -hmm. services. Right. 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 All right. All right. Anything else then? Other <laughs> snow removal? So, just so I know for future, uh, the cost of one of those sidewalk plows is about 75000 yeah. Okay, I'm just going to make a with, with the attachments. Yeah. Okay. No All right. All right, what else? The smaller the piece of equipment, the more expensive it gets. I was going to say, you can buy two trucks for that. Yeah. yeah. But they can't probably you can't, right? you can't fit it in a four foot wheelbase. Right. <laughs> Which is why our lawn repair line was $105 last year because we bought a new sidewalk plow that mm -hmm. doesn't terrify everyone's lawn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. This is really a Pleasure not to get those well, so okay, so devil's advocate for a second. We're carrying three grand on that line. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but I mean, last year we did a hundred dollars, the year before that we did six hundred dollars. I mean, do we need three grand on that line? Could it be a thousand? Yeah, I agree. Bring it down. That's good. There you go. There's two grand towards that sidewalk plow. I want to get you that stuff. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. It's, it's what I've always wanted. We're going to paint your face on the side. <laughs> I really wanted to put a trailer on the bigger home. That would be dereliction. Okay. What else do we got? Um, uh, the lighting. Yep. <clears throat> $99,000 for lighting. Yeah, I increased that over this current year because if you look at the history. Yeah. Okay, so let me just pause for a minute with street lighting. So Ben, you got a copy of that email too about yeah, um, National uh, Grid street, yeah. wanting to, what the price would be to convert all of our street lights to LED lights. And let me pull that out. Is that 
that's so that's so what happened is just to go back i mean before you run mm -hmm. um we met with national grid and um pre-covid and uh talked to them about what it would be to um, convert all of our street lights to led lighting mm -hmm. i'm looking for the proposal here you have it. Okay. okay i know well, i have it so just it, give me one minute. it didn't really pan out like, as I recall, the, the, the energy audit versus the cost, it, like, it wasn't really... Well, I just want to bring it up, just so everybody's... Is that cost effective? Well, yeah, like, it, you know, I think, I, I mean, obviously, going to LEDs would be, is, is you know, a good thing. But I, I think what they were, the way they kind of sell it is that the cost, the, the savings in energy offsets the expenditure. Mm -hmm. And in our case, like our energy, our energy expenditures are already relatively low, and so mm -hmm. the delta wasn't big enough for them to actually make that claim. Okay, so it would be if we were to convert all 491 streetlights, both roadway and decorative, to LED, the net book value cost is 145, 155, and 16 cents. The village would also be eligible for an energy efficiency incentive which would be $17,025. So the net after that energy efficiency incentive mm -hmm. to us would be $128,130. Um, so that would be to convert all 491 of our streetlights. Mm -hmm. It would be 128,130. Mm -hmm. And what are we saving energy cost with that? Well, how long would it take us to, long, to make up that money? Oh, that's What's that? that? Saying, it's how over how many years would it take to make up that? That's the, that was the audit yeah, that they were supposed right. to have done. Now, the other thing was with, with grid, though, isn't this the whole who owns the pole thing? Uh, a little bit. And we own the poles. But they own the lights now as it is. Okay. They own the electric and the, the, the power, the, the wires, if you will, and the light fixture itself is mostly grid. Cadman is ours. There's a couple of oddball streets that that we own the lights actually. But wasn't there, there was a reason to want to own the pole? Well, that's what it looks like. And if you want to put other stuff on it, if you want to put smart technology on your poles to monitor traffic and weather, and, you know, no, we can also birds flying by that day. Sure. Well, we there's actually, also, there are advantages to that. Really? Yeah. yeah. So we could also have the option to just convert the 317 roadway lights. And that would be after the energy um, incentive payment, it would be $9,591 just to do the 317 roadway. That would also be an option. And oh. then the decorative, they broke that out as separate, the 174 for the decorative. So you're talking about main roadways then, main streets. 317, where would those roadway, where are those at? I just yeah, those get an your, idea. Those, that's more of your overhead style. Overhead style. Like, to take, like, so to convert those out, it's about 9,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you. Do. But Matt yeah. has decorative light on his street. Yeah, we have code. <laughs> yeah. You have. I have the acorn the green acorn. Yeah. Yeah. Lights. Right. So those are considered in the 174 decorative lights that we have in the village, 174. And so that's what drives up the cost. So okay, so just to be clear, if I'm getting this math right, and maybe I missed a digit, yeah. but <laughs> for 317 yeah. cobra lights, it's 10 grand. But for the balance, it's a hundred and ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Because they're mm -hmm. doing that already. They're basically they're converting them. Yeah, I mean they're, oh, they're, I they're geared they're up to do they have all the fixtures and they're yeah. just like, hey, we're just coming out, you're paying they the labor to fix don't them. have the acorn decorative style that we use mm -hmm. in a in a that looks good. Right. Well, I mean, I, I would say if we have cobra heads and we're happy with cobra heads and we're not changing cobra heads, three hundred and seventeen out of five hundred. For ten grand, is it? That's, that's a after pretty the sweet energy deal. incentive, which that's was seventeen, and that's then a that, very good deal. yeah. So that's what I think. If we're doing anything, maybe we just you do that portion of it. Yeah, yeah. I this like that portion of it. I have to believe that the technology will catch yeah. up, and the the acorns will probably come down in price. And they've said that. They said you know they in our conversations they said you know there's a lot of people in your boat who have these style of lights, but the city of Buffalo look at any other small municipalities. Right, that makes sense. It's coming. Yeah. So I mean, for the for the want of the other 170 that are missing. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Mm -hmm. So do, do we want to go with that then? The 
do the Cobras. Yeah, I have no issue with that. Yeah, I, I think I, it would be a There's only 10 grand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, they're that's saying it's definitely worth it. Oh, that would yeah. pay for itself in a year. It, it would yeah. be, it would be, yeah, um, so it would be increase. Um, yeah. Put in there, plus what we'll save should pay for the maintenance and everything. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Look at that. Judy's thinking ahead. <laughs> okay. So let's put that in there. For, well, so it's in. Add that, we, add that to the, you don't think we need it? Money, Hopefully we'll save ten thousand dollars on the ninety nine thousand when we switch to the other lights, right? Yeah. And that would pay for the the, the upgrade. Yeah. So the money it should be awesome. So, so just leave it as it is, and let's just do it. Yeah. yeah. Good. Awesome. Okay. So how do we? Um, do you want me to just send an email back to Larry Martin at National Grid, tell him we had a discussion and we're heading in the direction of just converting the roadway lights? Is that or, or Ben, do you want to reach out to him? Yeah, I can reach out to him. Okay, so just this, we're on the same page. Now. How many is it again, Ben? 317. 317 Cobras. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the Cobra heads, I don't have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. We don't own those poles. Which is good. The power. Yeah, perfect. Okay. That's so $30 then we would a just... fixture. You can barely bail us. I buy an LED bulb for that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. Definitely. Okay. So, all right, so we'll, we'll proceed forward with this then. All right. That's in there just because it lasts much longer. Okay. I've not said that on a cruise to fix them. Good. Okay, so that was Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to keep that 9,000 because one of our decorative poles is about $2,000 a pop. And they shoot. Okay. They get hit and break all the time. Did we finally get the ones on Main Street from that to be repaired? No. Okay. Got um, it. Okay. Now we just got to get them up. Which will may just take that $9,000 right there. Is there any insurance the cost of it? One is from Mule Skinners and there's one in front of the B. There's two last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. As long as we have someone to go after, we go after. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we did have somebody in both those cases. Um, where to next? Parks? No. No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Page thirty-two. I don't think that was on my. Oh, that's yeah. not on yours. I don't. Okay. I think you just told me to leave it as a. Yeah. So never mind. What next letter? Okay, was there any changes on here? I know the big thing we're doing, we're leaving the 135 in for capital reserves mm -hmm. for parks. Yeah, that's what we did last year. Right. Yeah. So, so I did drop it by 10. Ten. What I did yeah. is I looked at <clears throat> what what the increases last Page 32. 32. Huh? One over. And what they were covering. And like if you look at capital improvements, I dropped that back because um, whatever was covered in that is was taken care of this year. So I dropped that back. I think I dropped the capital. I don't have that my old budget with me well, to see why. Yeah. But there were reasons why I dropped those back. But if you want to add it back in it at all, just say so, I guess. I mean, it looks like it's five grand one way or the other. I don't think it's going to make mm -hmm. or break anything yet. So what, as far as capital improvement projects, what uh, what do we have in mind for parks this year? Uh, that's a great question. I have yet to have a parks meeting. Um, um, so I wanted, to, I do want to talk about the dog park for a second. So um, that was something, and I would, I called Eileen because Eileen wasn't on the board when we put forth that resolution, right? Dedicating the triangular area off the Lehigh Memory Trail, um, and she suggested penning out a letter to all the adjacent properties of the triangle, kind of letting them know, you know, which I would include a copy of the resolution, just letting them know that we're targeting that area for a dog park. Um, several of those are, are um, town residents, and then we have a few, a handful of few that are village residents. So I will work on drafting a letter. Ben was good enough to get me all the properties um, via the topical, like topographical survey GIS, of all GIS. GIS. Um, so I will get a letter out to all those residents. Um, so I, I have the file here. So when we, after we passed the resolution, I did get three fence quotes. And because of the prevailing wage, the lowest fence quote came in at $38,300.
um, the highest fence quote came in at like fifty-four thousand dollars, and it's and it's really if you were to put a fence in your backyard, it wouldn't be anywhere near that. But because we're in New York State, we have to deal with the prevailing wage. Um, that is where we landed. So um, I am going. So to just to take a step back, I also had a, a conversation with Noel Bartlow, who was the individual who had the Friends of Williamsville Parks nonprofit set up, and early on this past later this past year, actually in 2020, uh, we, he had said he would look into bringing that back online. It's no longer, it's a defunct on for profit basically. And I spoke with him last week and he has informed me that um, he will not be bringing that online as a non-for-profit at this time. So that kind of leads to the issue. There are a group of volunteers who are residents who are interested in having a dog park um, they don't want the li personal liability by setting up a bank account themselves, which I completely understand. And it leaves us back to square one where we don't have a non for profit to collect the money through um, for um, you know, liability reasons. So I am going to suggest to this board that we, as part of our capital improvements for parks, we add on the dog park, which would be fencing and grading with the help of our Department of Public Works. And when I spoke to Ben, we thought about 48,000 would be the targeted that would cover the cost of the fencing and then any additional cleanup and grading um, that we would need for the park. I also asked Judy to check into liability because that was a question that you had asked me and I'll let you explain that. They, um, there is no additional increase in cost. They just gave us a list of um, items that should be posted and, and rules and regulations, yeah. which we, we have that all lined yeah, up. Yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but the, the overall insurance costs it would be covered in our um, li current liability. There'd be no additional costs. So essentially, the cost that we have, if we want to add a new park amenity into the village of Williamsville, would be roughly forty-eight thousand dollars to to get this thing opened up and get it get it going. Right. So that would be the fencing as well as tree removal and the grading. Yeah, a little bit of grading. A little bit of grading, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, um, as I said, I do have folks who, when we started talking about this in 2019, who are village residents who are interested in volunteering and forming a dog park committee, um, if you will, that would kind of be um, oversight, you know, and I envision them doing what other committees do, you know, doing cleanups, um, you know, seeing what other added amenities um, they can add into such as benches or, um, you know, additional trees or, you know, things of that nature. Um, so I just wanted to see if the board was amenable then to, you know, getting another amenity online by taking 48 out of the capital improvements here and uh, bringing it into a dog park area. What, what, how much has the, has the, have they been able to raise as a 501c3? Anything? They haven't, they they've never have established have that. They've never established that. Yeah, no. no. There's no longer 501 There's no, yeah. And, and, and the reality is with, with the current tax code changes that have happened over the years, the benefits of anybody donating to a non-for-profit, you're really not getting that tax incentive like you maybe got in the past. So there's just no real, you know, it, well, it could, right. But yeah. yeah, well, but you're right. I, I mean, and the other thing is that, you know, they don't, and the Friends of Williamsville Park doesn't have to be a 501c3. No, they don't. Um, they, it's just, it's it's just a tax write-off or that you can't really get anymore, right? right? But what's interesting, I should talk to Noel, I mean, uh, it sounded like with, with the playground, we had some life and energy and, and everything and a few of those volunteers who were really motivated to see the Friends of Williamsville Parks become a thing again. Mm -hmm. um, but I know with time and COVID and whatever else, things kind of fall by the wayside. And I haven't really heard that they have decided to just sort of not do it. Well, he had decided at this point, he just, yeah, he had, he had talked to actually um, Jeff Vogel about maybe getting some help with legally getting it online, right. which would be an added, 
you know, cost, it would need an attorney because it's been, you yeah. know, not active to get it kind of up and running. And then, you know, once you have it, then there's also the burden of filing the paperwork. So, yeah. you know, this is, you know, which is what happened with the paw part, you know, there was a group of volunteers running it. Um, they, uh, you know, didn't do the necessary required paperwork and they found themselves, you know, with, with having that's some complications that's from that's it. That. So, uh, you know, that's, so I guess, you know, I don't think it's a, it's a big lift, um, you know, the 48, no, I don't uh, that either. number I, to I'm, I'm bring curious. another park amenity yeah. on, into the village. I'm curious about what our ongoing costs would be. Uh, I mean, like what, what park maintenance comes with that triangle that we don't currently have? Well, we don't do anything. Like don't that. Do exactly. But so, well, you know, maybe I can get lawn to grow in there, maybe some lawn cutting, and then just additional dogs. Maybe it's on the bags. fence, stuff like that. Yeah. Would, would the town have that information for their their town park? Well, they don't take care of that. They don't take care of it's it. Private. It's, it's private. private. It's all volunteer. It's private. It's all volunteer. Right. Exactly. They went out a new road. And why can't this be volunteer? Because Basil, it's a it's a huge liability to ask lay people to be to shoulder that type of responsibility. And I can say this because you know my husband and I we we helped to we were part of the whole founding of the one on Smith Road. And I can just tell you that you know it's uh, it, it's a lot. The people who are interested in this park here in the village do not want to shoulder the liability that would be associated with their their name being part of that. I, I'm just curious. How does how does the town do it if uh, um, if they have the same problems that we have? Well, the town we, doesn't. The town doesn't. It's it's it's, it's it's not town home. It's just town land. Yeah, it's town land that was gifted to a group of volunteers. So the group of volunteers needs to raise money to have directors and officers liability insurance. Yeah. They need to have their own insurance. Um, policy and that is funded through all of their volunteer efforts, soliciting donations, um, fundraisers. They shoulder the responsibility 100%, including, um, you know, the lawsuit that is still pending. I believe that was, you know, from a woman who was injured in the park. And I, you know, and so I just think it's a lot to ask of the general public. Well, okay, so devil's advocate for a second. Why isn't it a lot to ask of every village resident who may or may not have a dog? Because it's another park amenity, and as Judy said, there's no. I could go to. I could take the my lawsuit. kids to Garrison. The lawsuit. Well, the lawsuit. we've gotten plenty of lawsuits from kids falling off equipment too in the playground. There's going to be a lawsuit. There's a lawsuit intrinsically in everything in life. Well, the different. I, I mean, it's. I, I. I'm not sure. I really, understand. maybe I don't understand the question. Well, I'm just trying to. You know, this is. This is uncharted territory, right? I mean, the town of Amherst, who has infinitely more resources than the village of Lansville has, doesn't manage and maintain and own that dog park. For what reasons? What about the one at Ellicott Island? Yeah, that's theirs. And I don't even know where Ellicott Island is. That's, that, that's, that's Amherst as well. It's yeah, by the it. Veterans Park, right? Yeah. No, that is no, off Boulevard. of the boulevards uh, behind. Oh, yeah. Creekside. Creekside. Oh yeah, great. I mean, it's the same thing. You ask. It's the same thing. You, what if you don't have kids and you don't use the playground equipment, or what if you, you know, I, I mean, it's the same argument. I mean, there yeah. are plenty of residents who don't have children and yeah, but might not up. want us like dumping one hundred twenty-five thousand into which was covered, but still, I mean, what our next project that we do may not get covered by a grant from an assemblywoman or assemblyman. Yeah, no, I, so I, I, I'm with I, you, but I, I, I think I could make some fairly reasonable arguments that, that playgrounds are more ubiquitous. Um, I have dogs. I have dogs. I never well, I know. Dogs. Arguably 50% have dogs, right? Um, maybe 30 to 50% of the population has a dog. I, I'm not, I'm not, look, I'm not saying no. I'm just, I'm just, I think it's more than $48,000 in, in real numbers. I just have no idea how to qualify that and and we're not good landlords right so well not for our parks no don't, creating... don't take what i said matt please don't take what i said out of context when we're i take, say we're let, taking no, out a maintenance no, burden. let me just clarify we're for a second we're, we're creating well, a maintenance burden that we don't currently have and i'm just trying to understand is that which i is it I'm, burdensome or is it just a chore okay so first of all let me just 
just clarify, when I say we're not good landlords, I'm talking about the two buildings that we own that we don't take care of, the section house and the meeting house. We do take care of the meeting well, house. We, we do tens of thousands of dollars in the meeting house. Well, beautiful. Well, it is a beautiful building, but I, you know what I, the and the section house we acquired three years building. ago. And it's been sitting there up until recently, not really anything being done to it. Well, it wasn't our fault. I'm not saying yeah. it's our fault. I mean, I'm just saying that we own it though. So just because it, it's still our ownership, we own it. We can't say it isn't our fault and point the finger to somebody else. I, I know, they own this fault we, on us. We wanted the building. We, we should be taking we've care had, of it. We've had the meeting house for four decades and we've poured tens of thousands of dollars into it. We've had the section house for two and a half years mm -hmm. and we haven't had the opportunity to pour money into it yet. That doesn't mean that that doesn't make that building uh, a, loss. Uh, a loss. Well, let me clarify the difference between buildings and our parks. And I think we do a fine job with our parks. And I think we're going to do even a better job now that we're getting the necessary updates to our parks that have been neglected for so many years. You know, um, so I, I think, you know, the dog, adding a dog park is just simply adding another park amenity to users. You know, you might not have a child that you take to the park to play. You may have a dog instead and you have another park amenity. Um, they're bringing, you know, they're all over the U.S. It's really not a novel idea or something that, you know, we would need to go out and do all the research. All the groundwork's been laid for safety and precautions and the double gated system of the gating and so forth. So I guess I'm just, you know, I'm looking just to see, you know, we have this money in capital improvements. I'm questioning, you know, what do we want to do with it? What direction do we want to go? If the board decides it doesn't want to do a dog park, then so be it. I'm just trying to figure out and understand. So when I get asked, okay, what are your plans for parks? I have some kind of direction or an answer to give. That's all, you know, it, simple as that. I hate to sound like an old fogey, but not being a dog owner, I, I, I feel that that should be something, that car should be born by dog owners who intend to use it. I own dogs. I own dogs. But I will say as a, as a village resident too, I never go to a dog park. We went to the new road once before. Um, I just turn my dogs out loose in the back, but our one would try to bite every other dog and every other kid. So that's probably part of it, right? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it, it, I do, I struggle with it. I mean, I, if we look at 50,000, that we're going to put in it. I'm looking at South Lawn, which we all know needs a lot of work too, and it's going to be more than fifty thousand. But I'm just saying, I do struggle with that. I agree. It, it, should it be borne by the group that will really truly use it? It'd be great if we were more of a city and we didn't all have backyards, right? But we have backyards, so that's that's where I I'm fine with us having it. But I don't I, I don't know if we should put it on everybody. I'm not gonna be here anymore, but that's just my two cents worth. So um yeah, I, I do I struggle. I love dogs, obviously. Okay, well I don't I we don't need to sit here and you know, I'm I can't I'm one voice on the board. I'm just bringing it up as a possibility. Yeah. And if there aren't other possibilities, I'd like to hear what other people's possibilities or thoughts are where you want to spend that money. And we don't have to get detailed, but you know, where are you thinking? I mean, are you thinking of part a, a bathroom at Garrison Park? A pool, the house, bathroom at Garrison Park. Is that what we're thinking? Are we thinking we're going to put a new pavilion in at South Long Park because the one that's there is very small? Mm -hmm. I mean, where are we thinking? Right. You know, I, that's just. I, I, are we thinking of a squares play in the future? Yeah, I actually, uh, Charlie's coming to hopefully coming to Parks in, uh, in March to talk to them about the ideas and what what is possible. And the, the the trouble with a splash pad at South Long is finding a home for it. The master there's a huge open field over there. Where would there be a problem finding a home? Well, there's other there's other amenities there. Oh, I understand that, yeah. but why not add? You know, I, I guess because there's because there's a master plan, and we don't want to we don't want to do this that prohibits us from doing that. Okay, so we're handcuffed to the master plan. Though. No, Is that it? I it's mean, it's we a can't, it's like, a road that it's a road map. For um, discussion. Right, a roadmap South, for discussion. Okay, as long as we're clear that we're not South, handcuffed to that. South Long is the most complicated of the parks based on all the amenities that theoretically want to be there, the land acquisition, the, the um, where the utilities are, the big yellow barn, everything, right? So for argument's sake, the, the best location for the splash pad is generally where the uh, tennis courts are mm -hmm. 
because that's where the water line is, mm -hmm. right? So sorry that the master plan might actually have thought about these things. So you are handcuffed to a certain degree unless you wanna bury hundreds of thousands of dollars more money to relocate water lines, right? Which doesn't seem like a good idea. Well, I was thinking we could tap in, aren't there water lines on South Long currently running that we'd be able to tap on closer to South Long? Not necessarily with, no. with the necessary fee. Oh, so I just, well, I'm just thinking, cause I, you know, I'm thinking South Long, there's, you know, water that people are accessing yes, for international chimney and stuff. Is there a way to tap the, off of that and then put the splash pad right off of South Long? Well, the main is actually oriented from Milton to South Long through the park okay. along the side. Oh, okay. From So that's like where the real water service is. Then you have smaller services along South Long. So okay. the, the better one to tap is in that axis. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So Everyone acknowledges that the basketball court and the tennis courts are in rough shape. They're also a nuisance to the neighborhood as evidenced by the fact that we've had vandalism of the you know, plywood to stop people from using it. By one person. Yeah, yeah but it curtailed the use of that, that amenity for two years, right? Because it was a nuisance, right? So the discussion was, is there a better location for those that A, opens up space for the splash pad and B, resolves some of the nuisance issues. So the discussion was, well, maybe it should move closer to the DPW mm -hmm. corner of the property. There's also been discussion about the viability of the um, softball field mm -hmm. and whether that should be relocated completely or yeah. abandoned, right? So um, there's pieces and parts to move. In my mind's eye, one of the projects this year would be to establish new basketball and tennis courts and maybe even a pickleball court because that was a request from the, the residents into the north west corner of the park closer to dpw along south lawn oh like in the, in the field area in the in the left outfield of the okay. the okay. ball diamond, mm -hmm. right because then that creates new amenities that are immediately usable. They're mm -hmm. relatively inexpensive because mm -hmm. it's primarily just some grading and, and mm -hmm. asphalt and some equipment. And now that opens up the that area where the tennis court and the basketball court are. is, which yeah. is adjacent to the water line, which mm -hmm. then also has the effect of no longer creating a physical barrier between the north mm -hmm. side of the, deep, deep, uh, the depot and the south side of the park. And now suddenly the park is actually mm -hmm. starting to come open up and come back together. The playground equipment in there is ancient and abysmal and substandard and breaking and cracking and stuff. So in my mind's eye, that's probably move number two. Mm -hmm. And and then that continues to open up that space for the splash pad. The splash pad, you're talking $300,000, mm -hmm. $400,000 to do something truly viable. And then you have to learn how to Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the, the hope would be that it is relatively low maintenance. Right. Caveat to that, of course, is it's pipes and pumps. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, the, the surface might be low maintenance, the equipment might be low maintenance, but the actual mechanism is the new unknown. And isn't there was Judy? Wasn't there some kind of additional liability for a splash pad? Only if you have um, depth, standing water. Okay. Yeah. So this would be zero depth. Okay. So it's zero. Okay. So we'd be good with that. Right. Um, so you know, and then the, then there's the whole design of that. What, what does about that look like? if we put that basketball court though and tennis court over in that open field, and that kind of takes away from that being the open field that it is now? It actually or no, it doesn't. doesn't. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. Yeah. I've been playing around with boxes mm -hmm. and squares and mm -hmm. things. Ultimately, the way the master plan kind of mapped it out, the softball field, if it were to be reasserted, mm -hmm. would be actually swung around towards the Milton end of the mm -hmm. property instead of over by the yellow barn. Um, okay. Uh, because then because then those, those basketball courts and tennis courts would actually be in the far outfield mm -hmm. of the, the softball court and the, the soccer field that could actually be oriented either north, south, or east, west in, the, in sort of sharing the same grass as the outfield of the ball dock. Um, 
So, but it's like a, it's like one of those tile games. You know, you got to move a tile to move a tile to put a tile in to move a tile. Um, and if we just keep putting stuff in, we'll never be able to move it again. Mm -hmm. And I'll be, you know, we'll be sinking hundreds of thousands of dollars into a fixture that we now have to try and work around as opposed to putting it in its, you know, what is perceived to be a proper location. But so that being said, that's what's in my head mm -hmm. as, you know, and I think also from a, a political point of view, we put $175,000 into Ireland, right? If we did another thing in Ireland or another thing at Garrison, the South Long people are going to rise up, right? So we, mm -hmm. so South Long is the, South Long is the long road. That's the one that has the most work, most time, the most investment, the biggest ticket item mm -hmm. when you aggregate it all together. Mm -hmm. So if we start focusing and kind of bouncing back and forth and making headway over there, people see that we're investing in that area where, yeah. you know, we have to, we have, we can't ignore it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the biggest investment wants to be. So we need to make the small investments to make the big investments be reasonable mm -hmm. and feasible. Mm -hmm. So I would say put the money back in there. Yeah. It was in the last year, but put it towards that mark or whatever. I agree with that. Right. I mean, ideally, I'd like to see as many things done at one time. I mean, it, like, arguably, let's say for a second that the that the uh, sports courts costs seventy five thousand dollars. Just pick a number. I don't know what they are. Um, I I do another project. Right? I do two. I do the sports courts and I do something else so that I could spend my hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. You know, bathrooms of garrison. Bathrooms Turns out ridiculously expensive. <laughs> Very much needed. Oh, I know. I know they are. I know they are. But if you relocated the, the, the two courts over to where they belong, then you could probably still have enough to do a, a play, a small play area or something. Well, or there. that, or we talked about replacing or putting the pavilion in. Yeah. Uh, and I like the pavilion too. I, I'd, I'd like to see the pavilion over at South Lawn as well, because then if it's a, of a reasonable size and a decent location, it also immediately becomes rentable. I guess. I just know that the one that's there now, kids end up sitting in it. That right. thing's a that thing's a bonfire waiting to happen. Yeah. 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 So no, I think I, no, I mean we, yeah. we go to we go to Paragon yeah. structures yeah. and we get ourselves like an yeah, actual we park. Need to have, we should have an actual pavilion there. I yeah. mean, we it's have an actual that pavilion doesn't. at Garrison, we have one at Island and on South Long. So we need to put that at the top of the list. Yeah. I think at the time it was purchased, it was a relatively low cost to put something in there for mm -hmm. South Long. Because right. at that point there was nothing. There's literally nothing. Right. So yeah, I mean I you know, and we talked about the idea of putting it closer to the parking lot or by the bathrooms there. And again, when you start thinking about how everything lays out, that ends up in the far outfield of the future right. ball diamond too, right? So if you're there with your family and you're having yeah. a party and the kids are playing on the ball diamond, mm -hmm. you're not getting whacked in the head with a softball. Right. Um, you know, um, so, and it would be an amenity that, that the neighbors immediately across the street would utilize more, you know, mm -hmm. more regularly. And, you know, it, I think it's, it's a good investment that's, that's relatively easy to pull the trigger up and install. Well, so I guess then that to that point, you know, I would put that as number one priority for South Long this year is to get a pavilion over there. Sure. Because we could pick out the placement, we know we would invest in it, we would get the right one and we would put it in. Yeah. And then, you know, whatever money you have left, you could certainly, you know, the tennis court, and the basketball court relocation, you know, I think that that's that's fine as well. But I, I think a pavilion is much needed. Yeah, I agree. And I think it just makes the park that much more usable. It does, because right now it's really just one family that can sit under that pavilion. Yeah. Yep. So, and I think too, if you get it out of where it is, it's kind of in the cover of darkness, which is. is currently an issue of why you have the vandalism going on in it. Mm -hmm. If you put it over closer to that parking lot, you've got a lot of eyes in that village square tower. Wide open. You've got wide open. I yep. think you're, you're going to deter the type of activity that's going on at South Park Park at night. So, so that I like. It'll probably become the smoking pavilion. No, oh, it won't be. Yeah. Really, we would just put signage and we would have to, we would, it would just need to be enforced. You know what I mean, we're not talking about. Well, well I, I know who we're talking about because I see it yeah, too, right? but you can't. Yeah. They're not allowed to smoke in that building. Yeah. 
Well, I know, but you, you would also not allow them to Okay, there's yeah. no smoking in our parks. There's not. I there's know. not. They don't go in the park. They sit kind of in the. Yeah, well, yeah. The kids go in there. The cute ladies. I'm not all, sure. All of the ladies from yeah. the tower yeah. smoke yeah. in the parking lot. Yeah. They smoke yeah. In the, yeah. on the street because they can't smoke on the property anymore. Okay. So they come out of the street. Early. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So they huddle back in there, the back yeah. edge, or right over there by the parking lot. We always say hello to the very friendly. Yeah, we have on the fire. Absolutely. That was people. It's a nicotine. They're smoking more than just cigarettes over there. What? I thought these are seniors. The seniors are smoking. I didn't know they were smoking. Okay, so I think we're good on this page. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, where are we? We're on 32. We're flipping past. 565 Main Street. What page are you on? Oh, where shall we go next? Yep, 41. 41? 41. Page 41. Okay. Actually, we remain the same. Yeah, I mean, just minimal uh, repair. Made this work on these. Okay. All right. All right. What up? Refuge and garbage collection is what it is. Um, we totes. added a tote of totes there. Yeah, we're running out of 65 gallon totes. You can have the right one that's in my yard, which you guys never picked up. We got two. I've got the old recycling bin that uh, Modern won't pick up because it's too big for them now. It just has a recycling sticker on it. Yeah, so the recycling sticker. Come over and get it. Take the sticker off. <laughs> So, um, so we added like in what, twenty years old. So we've got the six thousand. Yeah, that gets us. What was the number? Like one hundred and twelve. Yeah, quite a few. Okay, but so that's do, the minimal order that we can get off of the Massachusetts contract, which is Rary as a manufacturer, mm -hmm. and Rary is the style of tote that we have. I don't okay. want to go getting totes that don't match up to ours. No, I yeah, because then modern will be like, well, that's not the right coat. Well, well, yeah, yeah, right. lids, wheels. You know, all, all, all the interchangeable parts that go on and that break once in a while. So, um, are we charging people then for yes. replacements? What yes. are we charging per tote? Just so I know. 65. Used to be 60. I think, and that's 60. 60. They're, 50, that's, they're 53 dollars a piece. So we used to charge. We would charge 60. Yeah. Is that is it right on cost? I mean, we'll look at and see, make sure that that's going to cover the cost comes in. Yeah, we're not charging less than that. We good. Can, okay. Least, good. All right. If it's 62, whatever. That's we'll fine. Just 65. Perfect. So that's All right. As long as we're so this okay. is budgeted, but there'll also be a, a revenue as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Over, over time, because yeah. we, we don't sell that many every year. Okay. All right. But right. I think you know. But we do have a minimum that we have to order. So. Yeah, we have a minimum, and they're they're aging out. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and depends, you're going to start getting. We did have a lot of. Products. We had a rash, and that was the driver. Two years ago. That was yeah. that was you know if a driver is new or you know is mad that day he can break a tote like that. Uh -huh. So you know we saw a rash of them last year or something. Okay. Really? But uh, these guys, some of these are getting to be quite old. They they right were now. they were covering them, re um, paying to um, give these people new totes, and all of a sudden, because there were so many, they said, you know what? These totes are over ten years old. They're plastic. Yeah. Right. We have to stop reimbursing for them. And in the beginning, people kind of got mad, but yeah, like we haven't just, been seeing the breakage. Yeah. So we yeah, haven't again. People are not really complaining about having to yeah. deal. All right. That's that. okay, the recycling yes. contract's going down. Well, if you look at the numbers, last year I put in twenty four, thinking that it, that it would be twelve hundred dollars a month, not twelve hundred, two thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. We it hasn't been that, so I thought, well, you know what? Based on the two, past two years, let's bring it down to twenty two instead of twenty four. I think I was comfortable with that as long as everyone else is. Yeah. yeah, and I think people are understanding more now that less and less can go in those totes and they're yeah. putting those into their garbage cans. Which is awful, Which is but cheaper. Yeah. It's cheaper. It's still bad. But it's Most bad. unfortunate, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's something that's out of our control, so there's exactly. no point in mulling yeah. over it. Yeah. Moving on, what else do you got? We pick up. We pick up. Same. 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 Yep. Well, you know, the number of leaves is probably the, totally the same. Right? Well, don't we keep adding trees? <laughs> oh, we are taking trees down. Yeah. Equipment's okay. 
Yeah, yeah, we've uh, been able to rebuild our our lead pickers over the years. Yeah. They're, they're here too. Okay. Street cleaning stood same. What else? Five-year capital. The only thing in trees, Ben and I talked about equipment rental. We don't think that we're going to see any equipment rental because we bought a new piece of equipment, which is what they would rent. Back. Yeah, the excavator, we don't need to rent anymore. And we've got a, a lift now, too, to go to some room. So do we want to take equipment rental down to two thousand dollars? Yeah, I think that's that's it. And that's what we do we have for We're on page the board was saying something to talk about trying to break out some of the lines. Maybe it was under maintenance or something. So the rental was the money that we needed in to break it out under something else, and I forget what they were saying now. I don't know what that conversation yeah, was. So, yeah. Well, you can find if it's something we can change. I mean, this isn't written in stone today. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you take money from rental, can you put it into removal? Yeah. I think that's what they were talking about, and then break it out, and maybe even with the emerald ash or breaking that out. So oh, ashes stuff. versus non ashes. Yeah, or something. I forget. It's he was. Really, I don't think we need to do that. If they don't need to do it, then yeah. there's no point complicating yeah. it. Yeah. So, so if we go to removal, the ash borer is actually under tree maintenance. Yeah, when we do the uh, inoculation, tree inoculation. So I think it was under that one. I mean, we have plenty of removals that can happen. Right. So uh, what? Are, uh, so we're going to add so a thousand to that? Add three thousand to that. 3, yeah. 000. So the three thousand tree maintenance equipment rental, we're going to move into tree removal. Okay. Tree, we, so that's going up. We've popped that this year. Just, so it's going right. to go to 15. Yeah. We just shuffled money. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. Yeah. I think that was kind of what they were saying was that there were other things that we should move that money over into for trees. Okay. So that was our recommendation. I, I don't mind keeping 2000 in there just in, just in case. Okay. okay. Yeah, just yeah if something breaks money. and you got to yeah. rent something. Or if I got to do a real push to get a bunch of trees in, yeah. I can go rent another excavator for 2000 bucks and have it for a week. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right. Okay. Well, erosion that three thousand dollars is for uh, repair and replacement of damages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. 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 Part rebuild. All right, and then next we anything in sewer that you know that anything in sewer funding you want to go? No, I want my CMOM to be approved by DEC so I can start yeah. to do work. And we submitted our annual report to DEC, to the woman who is in charge of reviewing the uh, CMOM, which is the Capacity Management Operation and Maintenance Plan that we have. Oh, about that thing. Um, you've read every word. Actually, yeah, I have. <laughs> I, yeah. I just got a copy of it. Um, so once that's approved, then we can we can move forward and start to do some of the slip lining and work that's identified in that, that plan. Um, and Ed Schiller, you know, very politely said, why the heck don't we have this yet? You promised it to us like a year ago. Um, so we're waiting for that to come back. Okay. And once that happens, then we'll start to use the money that's in there from um, development fees. We've got a, a kitty somewhere in the building department of development fees. That we, I and I. I and I. So that money's going to start going into the streets for real. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, there's not a whole lot outside of uh, spot repairs and whatnot that we'll be, we'll be doing. Okay, so that's pretty much it is what it is in here. Okay, all right. Um, what, uh, anything you want to go over with the five-year capital plan? Did you look at it? Yeah. Lots of numbers. Very impressed. I had a little, had a little graphic showing uh, the street uh, work. That's where I, I really focus my efforts on. I call that video. They do it because it's not something that we often really do much with. But mm -hmm. the streets, you can see, we're at 25, 26. I don't have anything identified out mm -hmm. because we will have paved every street in the village right by then. So we're basically just probably going to turn around and start again oh, back to where we were in 2015, 16, <clears throat> which were, you know, we did in 15, 16 was Rock and Spring Street. I don't think that those are going to need a lot of work. So we'll really start to have to. Look more at triaging 
which streets now really need big work, like we're proposing on Highland, like we did on Cabin. You know, I look at the middle, I look at Reese, which we've done several years ago, they're starting to fail already. We're starting to see reflexive cracking. They need work in the base, they need addition of curves. Um, so I can see in next year's discussion, or in two years discussion, we're gonna be talking about big numbers for some of these streets, like we're talking about for Highland Hirschfield to get them so that we don't have to do them every five years. Uh -huh. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm shocked at the condition of Reese right now. Just that it, you know, the mill and pave is just a band-aid. It, it needs more. Uh -huh. and, and that's really starting to show itself now that we did it a few years ago. <clears throat> you can really start to see where the, the big issues are starting, are showing through. So yeah, you know, it's great we're going, we're going through our mill and pave and everything. You know that that's you know listed on a big, if you will. Uh, but we really start to, we really need to start getting into some of the, the deeper issues with our streets. Yeah. You mean lack of drainage? Lack of drainage, lack of base. Right. Mm -hmm. we, we asphalt on clay doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it's Crazy town. Um, so you know I know this number this year is a lot. 1.15, Judy keeps yelling at me for going over a million because <laughs> it makes it a lot more difficult to do our uh, our stopo and, and all that. So I mean, we can we can shave some numbers down and get this to a nine hundred fifty thousand dollar project, I think. And what um, what did we decide about from the um, Monroe? What we're doing? Are we still? I mean, I'm showing you the numbers and showing you what it what it. Projected to possibly cost. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you approved the survey work, which we can't do until we see some, right. some ground. So, I mean, effectively, we're talking about $783,000 worth of curbs and drainage right. on two streets. On two streets. Three, sorry, full. Uh, right, yeah. full. Yeah, three streets. And three nice long runs. So is there anything we I mean to get us back under a million like Judy prefers? Is there something we can kick to the next year? Because next year well, is probably probably kill kill farmer pretty easily. That's half your cost and you know, you know, Lake Ledge, you know, those guys up there, they could they could probably go a year or two. We could defer that maintenance if we really had to. Mm -hmm. They're they're I'd be comfortable deferring those two. Yeah, Lake Ledge isn't it's not that bad, but we're up there. Yeah. yeah. And Lake Lights has got a lot of reflexive cracking. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Farber is especially bad because they never put a crown on it when they paved it. So they've got water in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Monroe is 82 just to do the paving, but yeah. 248 for that, that's what added on for the French gutters. Yeah. And the French drainage. Gutters and some, uh, yeah, group drainage. And you basically multiply by 30. I mean, I have the $33 a foot, linear foot, in the mill and pave number. That's up slightly this year from last year, uh, but it is based off of the costs of this year, and then the hundred dollars on your foot to do the full kit caboodle with mill and pave and curb and gutters. It's a little conservative, but I'm comfortable with that number. Would he get double the years out of it? Oh yeah, if not more, yeah. Triple the years. Yeah. I just got to keep telling you, you go go look at Kevin. That's kind of my vision for for the streets. Much of the village, where we don't currently have upright curves, curves. Um, it's just a, a very good edge system where people can get the car off the street. We still are able to channel water down, get it off the pavement, and keep it out of the yards, which is why you get them like this. So we're going to, so we're setting kind of a precedent then for other streets in the village too. When they have, we're just going to just do the French gutters. On these streets, like we did Cadman, like we're doing, we're going to start. There's no curves. We're going to start doing that. It's going to be our gold standard going forward. That's correct. That's my vision. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be some and some not in the village, because well, obviously my street could never be a French curve. No, yours would be an upright. Yeah. You, yeah. I think you have some upright in some spots. Some spots, but definitely it's, not it's much. It's kind of like South Lawn with where it's hot yeah. much. Yeah, I just, you know, the French curves are nice. I understand the water drainage in that, but the look is, I just don't see it throughout the village. It seems like very East Amherst. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I prefer to maintain it to go with the traditions of the village and historical feel. Which is what? Uh, actually, not French gutters. <laughs> but what is it? The way it is no. now. I have no complaint. Right. That's my feeling. I have a complaint that, that you significantly reduced the lifespan of your pavement in that situation. Like by how much? I would probably cut it in half. Your, your, your water gets in at the edge, it starts to starts infiltrate, and starts to crack and cause your edge of your pavement to fall apart. And as soon as you start to get cracking, you get more water in and you get more failure of pavement. And this. So that you think is by 50%? Oh, at least. Oh, is it, so in, increasing the longevity of the PAVE project to a greater extent by putting in those French gutters, yeah, to, as opposed to not putting them in, just doing the water a water just sits there. Yeah, the water saying. sits right on the edge. You yeah. drive off the edge and create a mud pit. Yeah, I understand. I'm trying to picture this. So it yeah. damages the edge more. Dam so damages the edge, and then when yeah. the red starts to fall apart, it creeps in. So in the end, it is so in the, it's more money up front than it's actually cost effective long term because you're further um, supporting the the pavement essentially the road. Exactly, work. you give it a solid edge. To, you give it a solid. I get it. Yeah. You know, asphalt is flexible. Yeah, I get asphalt it. Pavement is flexible. It'll move. It pushes around. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a, a, a restraint. It just. So what's the turnaround for each each street that we repave? What is it in terms of years? Now. Yes. Maybe ten. Maybe 10. Like I said, with Reese and what I'm seeing on Mill Street, right. we paid those less than five years ago and they're starting to fall apart right away. So let so me ask is, you, you know, my big line. issue was all the main water breaks on my street. Yeah, well, you got an old water line. <laughs> yeah, so if, for, for, for example, if you put French gutters in, in a situation that that happens, is that then? That's a completely different story. Animal. Yeah, so who would replace those French gutters? And oh, the county would. They would. That's what I need to know. Yeah. Yeah, anytime yeah, the county does, because that's their water system now. Yeah, but they repair. would replace the French gutters as yes. well as the They have to put it back yeah. how it was prior yeah. to the water right. break. That's the. They're, they're good about that. And yeah. they are, because I've seen when they've done stuff, they do get it back to where it was okay, before. Okay, because I, all right. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as the look goes, you know. Personally, I think the look is okay. Um, I'm not crazy about it. I don't like the, route, the unraveled edge of the asphalt on the rotten front lawns, but I know that's and you, you don't have the the ability to. In I want to say all in instances. In some instances, we could do an upright curve. Not everywhere, mm -hmm. but not yeah. everywhere. You know, you like create you create negative drainage back towards the sidewalk. Of course, then you'd be dealing with that. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the town of Tonawanda. Every street had an upright curb, but all sidewalks were eight inches above the street. Mm -hmm. We have the, the French gutters or whatever they're called. Mm -hmm. We've lived in our house 30 years. We've never had them replaced. We've never had a water issue. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's good to know. Well, and I, I, I think, you know, I, I, you know, was the, to Ben's point, I mean, I think in the past, we you know, probably made some bad decisions as a village board and kind of band-aided a lot of our roads and stuff. And like, so, you know, and I'll just, I'll pick on South Peuda for a second, you know, so we had that street replaced in 2012 and it looked beautiful, but it was really just lipstick on a pig because the drainage issue, the, the flooding that goes on on that street and when we get any significant rain has never been addressed. And so when that street gets repaid, which you have on here for 2024, 2029, or 25, we have 90 grand. My question that is, that doesn't include any of the drainage, because that drainage needs to be fixed then. So I think if we're going forward and we're setting a gold standard here with Village Roads, and we're putting in an additional 248,000 on the road drive to fix, to fix the drainage problem over there and the curbing, the parking, when we go forward for the next you know, several years, we also need to continue that gold standard and, and, and you know, take care of underlying issues as well at those points. Oh, oh absolutely agree. I think, you know, for the record, I mean, the, the country gutter is not necessarily the solution to every problem. No, I'm not but, saying it is. But, well, but it's the, not that you get one you be an issue. The, underlying, there. the so, underlying issue that is village-wide is substandard pavement cross-section and drainage. Yeah. 
And so, yes, so the, so the point is, is that every one of these repaving projects really becomes more of a capital improvement it does. because we're, we're focusing on right. the thing that's causing the expenditure. Right. Right. Absolutely. And that's okay. It's, and I'm just, you know, stating that to everyone who's, you know, hearing that it is, I, I think going forward, that's the way that we need to operate because if we're doing it on a cheap upfront, it ultimately ends up costing us double mm -hmm. or more on the, on the end. Okay. So I would rather just do it right the first time and rather than having to piecemeal it, you know, two or three years from now, which is what we're seeing, which is happening over East and you've got a hard portion of the mill. And those were just even, I mean, when did we do mill? That's not even that long ago. I don't think it's going to be shown actually. Well, 2019, um, I'm sorry, Mill Street. Oh, 2018. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Main Village Line. We did that in 2018. Yeah, yeah, it's starting to show the. And then we, we're like two and a half years into it. So like it's, it's thirty six thousand dollars. Well, I know, but thirty six thousand <laughs> kind of wasted that right. time on yeah. because it, it shouldn't it should last longer than two and a half years. So maybe. So all right, just so I can just say that it sounds like we're all in agreement that that's the way we're going to proceed. Okay. Anything else with the five year cap? Um. Or anything in general you want to go over? Yeah. I, I'm in the five year cap for 21 22, it says community and televising 10,000. And smoke testing 5,000. We don't need smoke testing. Okay. Well, I'm just in the budget, I had 20,000. Should I leave it at 20 or should I reduce it? For what? For, for, um, for investigations? Sewer cleaning and televising. I would leave that. I would sewer probably leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, you know, somebody just copy so right, right. This, 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 well, I think it, it, you did a good job with it. You did a good job keeping it updated. It's kind of it's nice to see it, you know, on like a snapshot view and everything. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I had a really cool graph of all the streets that showed what we've done, and then this year, next year, next year, and then they've, I mean, we've gone through it and at least touched them all. Perhaps maybe not to the greatest extent possible, but um, mm -hmm. 10 years for 32 million miles. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. And hopefully some of these won't have to be touched. Because, yeah. Well, and, and two, you know, you look at obviously the amount of traffic that's on a street, obviously, the Texas yeah, wear and tear, you know, the big streets, you know, a street that's a side street like Park Drive or something that maybe doesn't get as much traffic. You're not going to. Um, you know, and I, and I look at Reese and Mill as examples of what needs to be a better street. It needs to be able to, you know, we don't have good sidewalk connectivity from Main Street down to the racing halls. Yeah, that's you know, for that's sure. A, that, mm -hmm. that should be a, a part of our long term goal is to work that into yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. Because I want that area a lot. Yeah, it's kind of your own street. Yeah. You know, Mill, we've got the width, you know, and, and we're, we're going for it. We're, we can make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Push that. Mm -hmm. Push those limits back a little bit. Give ourselves a decent sized bike lane and narrow up our lanes. Mm -hmm. Control right. speed too. And control the speed. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, those are kind of longer. And, I, and I'm not really seeing them have hit anytime soon, but those are long term goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Uh, I would love to buy a vacuum truck. <laughs> not on here, but. Our yeah. super jet is approaching the end of its useful life, and it actually it's well past. Mm -hmm. And it's not showing on here. This is you're talking about on the equipment. So where where would that be? Um, well, I see the sewer cleaner, nineteen ninety three sewer cleaner. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like the fourth page. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, nine three nine thirteen. It said it's going to last until 2020. That's fine. I'm not really showing it. That was last year. Yeah. <laughs> $250,000. Yeah. Holy mother. Wow. So, speaking of sewer cleaning. But I can get a, I can get a vacuum jet for vacuum for about $50,000. I mean, that's, and I can all work that in within the number that I've got here. But if you ever wanted to bond your equipment, or the larger bonds. So let me, so to that end for sewer cleaning, there was an issue recently um, this ha 
last year on um, California where um, sewage backed up into um, the basement and something about there was talk about like an alarm system uh, like yeah is that what is that I mean, possible to do like yeah but it's not cheap I mean we could just put I'm just curious what that cost could put the low monitor in, in manholes from the building if you have Plus the, the fees, you know, the annual fees that they go through. Okay. Plus the track. The track. You know, I'm not watching this. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't time. matter. I'll, okay. The alarm will sound, but, but I'm not, you know. Okay, I just didn't know anything about it. I just went, well, it just came to mind, you know, while we're talking about sewer sort of cleaning. Yeah. You know, I was like, I wonder, you know, because it was backing up in the residence basement and they're kind of like the low point, so they're kind of like, yeah, so they, they have, set the alarm when it backs up in their um, basement. They call you guys, right? Yeah. So. And, you know, if, when I hear basement back in line, I ask, do you have a legally installed toilet? Do you have floor drains that are connected to your sewer? Mm -hmm. I mean, is this, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. I, you know, things that you shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I, you know. Okay. Well, I just wanted to ask the question, but that's 5000 at least for a. Uh, yeah, for monitoring. Yeah. Per. Per example, yeah. And then ongoing maintenance work. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got two right now for our energy security. But mm -hmm. The one itself allocated to the park, and then we have the flow meter in the siphon itself. So. The siphon, we have to do the self connectivity, right? Yeah, self connectivity. No, no, that's that's uh, self -out. or self -out. So I'm curious, why would there be one in South Bell? Like, well, how did that come Because South Bell Kid is, and South Bell Kid Park is a main trunk line that, that collects everything north, I'm sorry, south of Maine, okay. all the way over to where it ties into where it comes into. Oh, okay. So that, that's a major, like, that's so a like major. terminus of our, yeah, of and our so the reason we have that in, in anticipation of doing sewer work, we wanted to know how much we, I and I, mm -hmm. we were reducing. Yeah. So we need to have a baseline. Before and then after, yeah. and that was installed in anticipation of doing the work that did not get there to do. So, okay. we're collecting lots of data on the pre condition, mm -hmm. uh, you know, hopefully, to find out what what, what reductions we have when we start mm -hmm. doing the work. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, we, we, we can monitor all points of the village. <laughs> we have that ability to monitor. Yeah, I, I, I don't have much else other than that. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. We'll let you go then. So, anything else for Ben? Looks great. Yeah. We're in a good spot. We are cleaning up the section house. Yeah. Good. Is that good or bad? Oh, it's good. She was yay. I was going yay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're, we're tearing out the ceilings. Plaster and um, metal lattice rooms that uh, the previous occupants just destroyed. And we pulled down all the drywall, we found the ceiling that had holes in it every five feet for recessed lighting. Um, so we're basically just gutting it to the point where we can see. I, I found a couple of beams that would like to create light to a choice that we were holding. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it's a very structural statement. And are we still thinking about having? Like the depot and maybe the historical museum share that space. Well, I'm asking as a general think, question for the board. I mean, I, I haven't talked to the depot in a year about that, but that had been their hope was to have their offices relocated to the second floor of that. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, um, and that was they were excited at the prospect of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, similarly would enter into whatever sort of you know tenant arrangement agreement that you know similar to what they have at the depot now. Mm -hmm. Um and then you know, I, I personally haven't been in there, so I don't exactly know how big the space is, but I mean it's like it's, it's, uh, okay. It's it's not, so I think yeah, the, the bunk hall I would say is probably half of this. Right. And then you got about that much in the basement. Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice. All right. That's a sizable space. Um I mean I, I, you know, you, you hit on something I think it was last meeting talking about the um Buffalo Niagara Heritage Museum. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering. They're not even holding it. 
Yeah, no, I know. I mean, it's a museum. It's, it's a weird thing. But I, I wonder if, as an organization, they'd be interested in maybe taking over some of the uh, not exactly sure what the word is not maintenance so curation. much curation so to speak of the of the of our I think they've done that well I, I just if there's a I mean primarily right now the village historical society suffers from a bit of a staffing issue and literally has like one person or <laughs> <That's why I, laughs> that's that's Mary what I heard well, and obviously, pandemic related is an extraordinary situation. There's other issues. Well, I mean, I guess, or or whether we talk to even the Buffalo Museum of History or whatever, like if there's if they could, if they, if it could be conglomerated into a larger organization, you could have a small satellite so that as a tenant. It has an operation as opposed to just a dust collection. You know, then then there might actually be the opportunity to have more frequent visitors, more you know events there. You know, a curated sort of you know aesthetic as opposed to just a pile of accumulated. Well, that area would become more effective to if they do have the engine. Well, well, right, and and that comes back to the conversation about the parks too because it's very tucked into a thing that's isolated by walls and, and fences and trees that were put in specifically to screen ugly industrial areas that no longer exist and side yard and you know things like that so like as that whole area opens up that that house becomes much more prominent and present on milton and you know it, it changes the entire end of the street there it could Except that it's got a very tricky asbestos encapsulation issue at the moment of being very expensive for us to put the exterior for there. Yeah, got, it's the, the asbestos, what you see on there is a coating over the asbestos um, mm -hmm. uh, that's there, what is it kind of made of there? Stucco, basically. Mm -hmm. And that that material is cracked all through. So you're seeing you're seeing that reflect through the outer coating. And the guys at the Vitality are kind of scratching their head. I want to do this and make it stable so it doesn't really crack, but not have to vacate okay. the whole building because it's mm -hmm. stucco attached to the feed pile, which is not going to come off. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have a we have a proposal. I don't think you saw that. We have a proposal for their design services um, to to increase to do the design work. Um, and they're not even sure how it's going to happen. So they're, they're, they're just they're really scratching their heads. What kind of system we're going to? Have. This is the interior. No, this is the exterior. 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 The, exterior is the pink. Um, well, you know, I would I would just prefer that you know only the people who are going to use that building pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's why two people sitting here just said what you said about the dog part. No, I would say I would prefer that the people who are going to use that building, um, myself would be excluded from that, um, not have to pay for that. So I entrust that this board here, the rest of you, will figure out a way to make that happen. <laughs> Thanks. Well, you know, if you want to make it viable, or if it's going to have to happen. One way or the other, we just don't do anything else in the building. Well, I mean, well, that's it, what if that's what the historic grant. So then it's spread out over the entire of the state as opposed to a building. Which is the so you get to pay for it, but much, 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 much smaller. Yeah. <laughs> that is true, but they still get to pay for it in some respects. So thank you for acknowledging that. So many people say to me, well, we didn't pay for that. It was federal and state grant money. Like it fell magically from the sky with that uniform. Federal would be even better. You know, gets, it's, it's so uh, yeah, so we do we do pay for it at some level. And I guess I will entrust and you know, Basil now you won't be here, but I'll trust uh Eileen and Matt to, and maybe the new trustees to come up with a way to pay for that because I would prefer not to. Um so we'll leave that for another conversation. Ben, do you have anything else for us today? All right, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Cool.
Um, let's just take a quick recess before we. All right. All right. You make it. Right. And you always watch that flag. It's so exciting. Oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. I remember it's all the one. I think this one was in uh, 2000. And it increased to 3,000 out of the top two removals. Okay. Yeah. Is that right? Yep. It's okay. on the three on two. Yeah. Is this all good? That was that was good. Okay. Hey, Ben, are you an essential worker? Uh, no. no. I am not. Nor am I crew, apparently. Okay. Because they are not in any way yet scheduled to get. Texas. So you gotta wait another whenever. I got I got mine. I got mine to the volunteer requirement. Okay, so you oh you have a deadline. Yeah, and Adam and, and Kevin got theirs. Yeah. Uh, the rest of my guys are waiting. Okay. Get your separate one yet? Yep. Still all okay for that? Nope. It hurt. All right. Yeah, I, I saved mine too. I, I after my second one, all I had was fired. Yeah. I literally slept the day after. I my arm I couldn't lift it and I you know some fatigue but nothing like my dad was gone for a day my mom was fine all right they're both seventy four yeah and, you, know, <laughs> you know who knows why one versus the other mm -hmm. my dad's had cancer treatments for that but my mom had a stroke and both of them are somewhat you know right. worse or whatever yeah all their things seventy four. But I, they got them because of the uh, volunteer fire. They got them because of the volunteer fire. And my mom had to be with them. She said, like get one? I said, sure, we're in. Yeah, that's usually by the end of the day, we were going on anyway. So it was, it was absolutely good. Yeah, I've noticed they're very willing to let me get it at the same time. Massachusetts started the program for this. Basically, it was a, a one plus one. Basically, anyone who brings a 75 year old or older. Oh. We'll get a shot too. So it could be an Uber driver. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're driving. Oh, right. yeah. Well, funny, my parents went to uh they rent a place in Florida, Cedar Key, for two weeks a year. And so they saw the storm coming. And so they're like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna try to make that Civil War buff thing, we're gonna flank the storm. Right? So we're gonna go way west come down and go visit Texas for a few days. <laughs> that worked out. They got stuck in Mississippi for two days. Oh, Ouch. Thank God they had their camping gear with them because everything was closed. They had they were eating their the gear that they the food that they planned to eat while they were in Big Ben uh -huh. in the hotel. And then they like they're like nobody out okay and they started going so they drove at like five and not out of the road was terrible. <laughs> but yeah, they, they were like plowing. we gotta start going to Florida. It took them three days to get from back to Mississippi to Cedar Key, Florida. I saw a map. They sent me a picture today where the sun is out and it's like 60 degrees. I saw a map yesterday. Seven over 71 percent of, of snow cover. Yeah, I agree that. Yeah, and it was basically Florida and Southern California. Yeah. It was the only places that weren't. Yeah, yeah. I can look. Well, who, who would have thought that the so much of Texas would be so cold no for so many days. No one ever. No. Yeah, I mean, that's really interesting. Listening to some discussion, I heard some of it in the yard. I like that years. video you posted there of the guy who's like Stone Age technology. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we can put a rover on Mars, but we can't. We can't make a windmill work when it's cold. And then, yeah, yeah. Jeff Burroughs posted something, you know, same thing. Like people in Texas, you know, Buffalo were having fun, like. It was yesterday, it was overcast and cloudy, and my solar array did 50 kilowatts. It's basically half of the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yesterday we can do that. Uh huh. <laughs> you, no, you don't have panels. I do. You do. Okay. Yeah. What are you, what's your system? So 3.84 uh, kilowatts. Okay. I don't think I've been generating much last couple of three days. So I did just see something. I thought during overcast you were still get something. Oh, yeah, but it's, when it's covered in snow, you get nothing. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Okay. Um, right now. Well, you know, speaking of Texas, they, they probably never thought about burying stuff. 
very well, deep. Or they thought deep. about it. They just chose not to do it. Well, how the American I mean, that's that's the really scary thing because their, their infrastructure now is crashing. Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah. They're, 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 the, oh, yeah. the takeaway is that they, their their system has a lack of abundance. Yeah. And they can't tap into any other grids. Well, they didn't want to. They didn't want to. <laughs> so, right now, I'm making five. Right now, I'm behind. That's pretty cool. I think it's three. Yeah, it's 14. 14.16. I'm currently generating nothing. No data. Yesterday, no data for the week. Part of I remember. Did you know that? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I know when the uh, right when the when it's well, generating though, because I have a couple of panels just above my front door. Right. Oh, and when they go, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you all. Take care. Yes, bye, man. Me too. Did you guys figure that out? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. We'll figure it out now. These pieces are delicious. Very good. I ate too much already. I never eat this much. Sausage? Yeah, you don't eat till after 12. Sausage, bacon, onions, and butter beef. Very good. And you put a little tear down, right? Nope. Am I? You seem like a little tear down. Oh, it was rosemary. Yeah, I don't tear it up for me. Rosemary. So, we, so are we, do we, so are we going to, are you, uh, outside, are you guys going to be over on the tax bill? I don't know. Do you want to ask? Because I saw you was on the agenda. And we always Oh, we do. I knew we always did. Okay. We have to have the to have to have have to have to have to have Right, so we can also cancel the uh, and then we here. don't have to, so we won't approve it and we won't send it. Why was the public hearing canceled for the um last week, Wednesday? What was it for the um for the restaurant? Zoning? Yeah, zoning, yeah, we're zoning. enough people. Oh, that's why? Yeah. Yeah, because I was just um, curious what people, what they were going to be oh, no, Starting board members? Yeah. yeah before. That's a shame. Well. Because we did a public hearing yeah. like that. Well, there, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Every zoning board is a public hearing. But the. By you know what I mean, especially the, on this case, particularly. The weird thing is, is that it wasn't. Sorry. I mean, maybe Tim would correct me, but for me, it wasn't even 100% clear that there was a agenda for Oh. And then Tim sent out a thing to the zoning board members on like Monday afternoon, like, oh, by the way, there is an agenda for Wednesday. Right. And I think generally the ZBA is really good about preserving that night. But I mean, by the time you're within like 72 hours of the event, if you haven't seen the agenda item, right. you probably assume that there isn't one. Because it was in the paper, the Irish move for blah, blah, blah. I was just curious, you know, if you guys didn't. Yeah. Tim did talk to me about that. And happened. his feeling was that he sent out a list of dates in December, planning our meetings on these dates. So you should plan that we're meeting on those dates, unless right. otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Or zoning yeah. board. Zoning board. And unless otherwise conform. Yeah, and that's so, true. I 100% agree with that. And, and like it's it's got to be expressed to the members so they understand. Yeah, the ZBA, I mean, the, the faces on there have not changed in years, and they're they're pretty good about that. So it, it's a bit of an extraordinary situation like this for. Yeah. Um, I'm I mean, not sure what variance that they're going for. It's probably parking. Parking. Yeah. yeah. They want to expand their patio. Oh, I know. Oh, um, so. Who's this? Irishman. So some the dumpster location is going to be changed as well as reduction in more parking. Like, yeah, basically they want to take the back half of the parking and turn it into a bright sense like computer garden. So it's going to be like, yeah, we talked about that. It's going to be like this is Yeah. And, the, and then as uh, the dumpster has to move forward mm -hmm. close to Main Street, which is contradictory to literally everything. I mean, it's awful. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a, you know, the reaction to that building itself in its location to go to the end of the year and blah, blah, blah. 
it's it's an odd request because in addition to increasing their unfair seating capacity and creating a second car, they also intend to then also file for summer patio uh, to restrict the parking even further to have people under umbrellas in the parking lot in front of the covered portion. And the bar, the bar the side. Well, how many how many spots are they legally supposed to have parking? Oh, I right they now would, they would not be able to actually put enough parking on that property without the building on it. Yeah, so right. I mean, that's exactly how it is now, in my opinion. Yeah, and they have. I think they have twelve parking stalls, maybe uh, two, two handicaps. It might be holding, but then they chew up four. Um, for the upper seating, mm -hmm. and now they're going to chew up at least another four. So they're going to be down basically the two handicap stalls in the discharge aisle, uh, and one regular stall. No, this, but this says you have to go to the Z. Correct. It, that's yeah, what we're talking about. It, it, yeah, something it something yeah. happened, and the BPA was, wasn't able to get a quorum. But they were able to get three, but they decided. No. They decided not. not yeah. you know, I, I know we backed off our parking requirements, but I, I feel like we're kind of Pushing it because that whole there's three restaurants that are rolling there. So, we started crafting we went down to the back of the department, but we didn't take them off. So, it's still a car and a half per thousand square feet. And the argument that they're making is that during the summer months, they're not seeing an increase in the population of users. Because they're all sitting inside. But I find that hard to believe because every time I've been in there in the middle of the summer, they're all at night. There's people inside, there's people outside. So they're literally doubling their capacity. Mm -hmm. So, but that, there is no metric in our code that deals with the square footage that is in the middle of the room. Right? So, how many chairs can you add to a property? Mm -hmm. Before you increase the top with the user population of that property to the point where you're actually creating demand, and then they keep falling back on the lot back here. Mm -hmm. Well, Irishman falls back on this lot, and Tyson falls back on this lot, and Creepy falls back on this lot, and Eagle House falls back. You're gonna live up literally have to start stacking cars on top of each other. Yep, parking garage. <laughs> if you reconsider the bid, the bid should be part of the increase. The parking increase. Because it is for this district. And in that, you also do the maintenance. So it's kind of a bit of a whole other discussion. No, you don't. I don't do that. You know, because we yeah, talked about we doing the so 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 district and having this district pay more taxes. Right. Where do you want to go? Let's go. 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 On page two, yeah, the state, according to um, NICA, yeah, is cutting back 20% on that. So that's that 3462 in front of me. No, actually, it's what? Right. Yeah, that's a good question. We have for second. That negative 3462, that is. Okay. We that is um we haven't gotten any money from AIM for this year. Okay. So that that collection is actually old home base money, but we had to change the account numbers um because of the state. The state wanted the 2750 to be AIM related payments, and we had previously used that for old home days. So excuse me, at the end of 2020. We had money come in in June of 2020 to pay for old home days from 2019. So through journal entries, when it was reversed, because it went into 2750, now I have to do a journal entry too, because if you look down at 2754, you see a positive. Yeah. Those two will work. Okay. All right. So Sorry about that. Okay. So yeah, so that's why the decrease in the annual payment from the 56 to the 45, because currently, and it's projected for the New York State budget that he is cutting annual payments by 20%. Okay. Yeah, but on a better note, right now they're saying they're not cutting chips money. 
Um, which I had um, got ideas of looking into. We were told that chips money for this year was cut by 20%. So when we filed for our chips money, we only filed for 20% of what was available. So she's um, got, did you hear from me yesterday? Yeah. She's got a call into um, Erie County to find out, uh, Everett House is the one who's in charge of the chips program, to find out if we can apply for the 20% that we didn't apply for the current year and get that money. So we'll see. We'll see how it all phase out. But so that may be coming up. Can so push they, it out? they for according to the, the projected budget right now is in there and going. All right. Okay. So anybody have any other points on pages two or three? Um, was sales tax under our revenue and what are we taking on that? Okay, sales tax I already kind of yeah, but he had, oh, okay, he had, but that's okay. I reduced it because 10,000 of that is being taken away for, how is it being taken away for? Well, that was um, the letter from the highway yeah. 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 yeah, the highway's letter. All right, so we're down. Yeah. We're down so, the and then I cut another 10,000 out of it because, um, just because sales taxes, yeah. you don't know where it's going to come in. And Amherst is down 9,800. Chico was down 50. That's 10 grand. Judy got Yeah, just to be on the safe side. Yep. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. I was question. Okay. All right. Page four, then, board trustees. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think we should just leave education where it is. I think NICOM is supposed to happen in the fall, and you know, then they'll be the one in the next March. And so just leave it where it is. Right. That page five. <coughs> that would be the Right. Quick question, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, did you uh, attend the meeting this past Thursday? No. Okay. Oh, the NICOM one? The NICOM one. Yeah, I was on it. How was it? Or, it was good. Were you there? I can't get on. Oh, you think yeah, I was on it? It was it was good. I mean, introduction was short. I mean, I expected to be there like for eight hours, and it only went till noon. And then you should pick a topic that you were interested in, and then do that at any time you wanted to. Yeah. Basically. So I went back and did the environmental part and whatnot. But um, yeah, the eight to oh, nine to twelve, it was it was okay. I mean, I didn't learn anything new. Except for things that would pertain to my husband and rentals. <laughs> so that was interesting to listen to because you know all these people that are renting out apartments are not they're not receiving any money from their renters and blah blah blah. But yeah, it was interesting, but really nothing new that yeah. I didn't already know. Mm -hmm. So we short and sweet. Okay. We did submit those pictures to the photo contest and then we're back on that if you want. Keep more. Mm -hmm. Keep third place. Oh, that's great. Yeah. This is a big picture of the pocket part of the door. Yeah, so what did he get? There's a few prizes. Yeah, because I submitted one too. That was great. Yeah, oh, good. So we went in and loaded it off. Yeah, cool. Good. All right. But anyway, you didn't miss anything. Okay. <laughs> um, page six under expenses for mayor. What What is that personal services? What is that's salary. 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 That's That's salary. 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 I know. Well, that's why I was asking. I'm like, why is that? Because I know. I mean, <laughs> all right, I'm out of here. That. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, there's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there is, and you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Run. We're, being, we're, being we're, we're trying to find money for the section. <laughs> house. We're taking that four thousand. We're going to the section. Yeah, house. We're going. We're going. We're going. <laughs> The 
and hey, just just to refresh your memory, um, it's the same thing for the twenty. I know. Eight, I know. Eight, I know. Eight, I know. Eight, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. All right, Village Park. Um, I think there's nothing on here that we really need to look at. Um, Grant Rider on page eight stays the same. I've got the same. We kept the same, so that's okay. Um, attorney fees. Attorney fees. We need to talk about the opinions, right? Yeah. Um, we used to only budget like nineteen thousand, but this year you can see where we're already over seventy thousand, and that in mm -hmm. large part has to do with the um, the loss, the open loss of tax. Yeah. Um, so that would be mostly so that. And then, so do I don't that, know if that's going to go into this year, so that's why I budgeted high. Um, so I, Chip wasn't sure when that would be settled. So you think 30, so, then you're budgeting 35. Yeah. So do you think that that's enough? I hope so. If it's not, then we go into contingency. Okay. Well, I feel like, I mean, well, I guess why would we go? Let me just ask this: Why would we go down from forty to thirty? Uh, because the union contract, we should have that settled this year. We're, so that was pushing. Yeah, we're so the forty is negotiating. Yeah, the union contract, which will which will you know occur some. It's starting in March. I will need to get that negotiated. All right. Well, so you're comfortable on the thirty-five? You think that's a good? Good area for now, or you yeah. Because I didn't look, I said we're at 70 now, and then we got the union contract to get settled, mm -hmm. and then any additional fees on the lawsuit for okay. brokers is going to add into that. So who knows where it's going to end up this year? Okay. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, it won't spill into the next fiscal year. If it does, it won't be mm -hmm. as intense as it's been. Okay. All right. So that's that page 11 then um, for engineering. Funding. No, I've knocked it down to because I think 2000 was supposed to be for GIS mm -hmm. engineering. So I just we not okay. That's fine. And then <coughs> um, election fees at the same where it is. Same, okay. 620, um, that's basically this building. Mm -hmm. um, So we increase the bond system. That's good. Um, for which one? Oh, okay. oh, okay. five, five, five. Five. That's that fifteen was more than just the bond system, but yeah, Ben and I are going to be working on that because the current system that we have now, if we're going to close the building, you know, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, so um, we're going to try and. Have it so that DPW fire department village hall will call. Yeah, so that's something we're, we're working on. Okay, but well, that's on this year's budget, and if we don't use it, we can sign it. Mm -hmm. So like that, I didn't include that part. The uh, the bathrooms, the bathrooms. Yeah, we've got money in our signings. Anything left over this year, if we want to get it started beforehand, mm -hmm. we'll go into the signings, and I think we're pretty. Good shape with with what we have in the assignment for bathrooms, and then that paint carpet, etc. Line the five. Do you feel that's a good level of where yeah. we need to be? I think so. Okay. All right. Let's go and touch the diamond. Sixteen forty. We already talked about it. Mm -hmm. Insurance. I brought that down because we've saved a lot of money switching to minor. Okay. Um, we currently paid up to fifty. We still have another payment due this year, so. Municipal association dues that stay the same. We always budget a little bit for these two items because we just don't know. The contingency. contingency, we've always kept it pretty much in 60. Some years we used it, some years we haven't. Yeah, we should have All right, longevity, that's different. Mm -hmm. Page 20, we went over with Ben. Page 21. Fire department. Uh, building. Uh, I believe everybody has um, something from 
Tim, in your notebooks, safety inspection. Yes. Yes. So in your notebook, okay, so we pretty much stay pretty level. Um, if you read through his, his ask, he talked about the vehicle purchase, yes. which we had talked about last year that we were budgeting for it. We're using um, revenues that we received in excess of permit fees due to the locality project. Okay. And if you go back to, I don't have my, um, if you go back to page one, I believe it is, I'm fine with, so we might, I think we budgeted 90,000. And we were already at like 131. So the money is already there um, for the car. Yeah. Here it is. Uh, line 1560. We budgeted 90 and it's currently at 147. So there's so that month that 23. I feel like it'll probably go 30, but we'll know we'll know more of the amount the cost is going to be once we get to May when we've renegotiated the state contract mm -hmm. for cars and vehicles. Um, so that money will be put into the assignment until he gets the vehicle. That's fine. Yeah, we need so that. That's talked about the, there. Yeah. Other than that, his budget is pretty much the same. The technology upgrade, though, I want to talk about that because that was something that we've been discussing for that's years here. Too. And we absolutely need to do something. Um, with that. And I know he said that Keaton is looking into some things still, and that to be determined is what we have waiting on a quote. But, um, you know, we'll take a look at where that comes in at. But I mean, I think that would go under 1620. But yeah, we don't have any pricing. Yet, so I don't really know what to even. Well, so if you look, I mean, what he's looking to do, um, you know, project would involve a computer for the room to allow for streaming and projection, permanent TVs for here, mm -hmm. um, webcams, et cetera, and exact estimate of proposal will be provided to once we have it. Sound and Theater Enterprises has been working with me to finalize an exact estimate and can expect to have the proposal by the end of this month. So, okay, I was going to say 10 grand. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I think said that Bob's system, I believe, is in the current year's budget. Is it your current year's budget? So, and do we have at least 10 grand in that line? Yes. Yeah. All right. Then I think we're good with that. And I think that, you know, I don't have any other questions on what the building department is asking for the budget. So, yeah, the fifteen thousand included permanent placements, which we already used the permits, and they want fifteen thousand dollars. So we've got money there, All right? So then that mm -hmm. takes us back. We might even have enough money this year to call it off. Right. So, um, so um, that takes us to page 30 now, right? Listening, so for the website, um, graphic design services down to 500. I mean, I'm guessing you might keep and look at all this. This is all actually no, but um, I just figured if you look at the marketing this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's been charged to that? I just think five hundred was enough. Mm -hmm. sure that's so, the graphic design services, I don't, I don't remember what that was for. And that could have been from that description could be from years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure. <laughs> flags, we always um, buy yeah, the flags. flags. Yeah. And the yeah. website, it's not costing us much anymore. All right, well, then I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Here. I mean, the other thing we did talk about, um, the, Dan Ryder still pushes that sound too, which I agree with him, is, is hosting our own servers so that we can kind of roll our own. Do you know how much that would cost us? No, that's what we're It would be, it would be um, 
thousands, tens of thousands. I do have something. The other, the other point, because you've also talked to me about that, yes. um, is that would we be opening to... ourselves up then more? Yes. To, yes. Um, I think I have. Yeah. I did ask the town about this. Yeah. The, the bigger question for the town is why can't we accept bigger funds? Yeah. That would be the easy solution. It's probably, not, it, it's probably a, a, an approach of not filling up the mail server as much. If you, if you don't limit it, you should send those a different way. Do them on Dropbox, pull it to your desktop because anything that comes through, it's got to be saved. So if you if you make it open, you just send any size you want. The reason that because we have to we have to save every single thing. That's the other thing is if you got to have a big server. Right. Yeah. Because it's got to be safe in perpetuity. Right. Right. It's part of what? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the town uses advanced 2000 and one of those, you know, outside yeah. server, you know, to, to store all that stuff. Yep. Um, and we certainly, you know, we, we benefit from their storage capacity, undoubtedly. We right. have to <clears throat> considerably more than probably does to maintain our own small little server. Right. 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 There was a whole reason. I mean, he gave me the reason they limit the size and and, and so that's what about. Um, I mean, and and two, you know, the whole idea of you know partnering with the town and that's certainly a partnership is that it's cost savings to the village residents. I I just yeah. right. I don't want to. I don't know why we would want to go out on a limb and then add additional thousands of dollars a year. To have our own server here when we're already paying, it just makes no sense. I get that he wants it and he feels it's important, but quite honestly, it's maybe a little bit more effort for people to get larger files to us. But we need to look at the cost benefit. And to me, I just I I can't justify that. I mean, maybe you know, you feel no, like I should. Say we should. I, but I wanted to bet it while we're here because it, it comes up again. I feel like so we bet it every year though because he has the same yeah. request last year. Well, and we, we, gave him the, we gave well, we did. He had the I same request like, last year. He had the, you know so. I mean, there's, I, I, I don't really know how else to say it. It's just, I don't feel like we should have to pay twice as village residents. We're already paying into using a town service, and I just don't want to support paying again for it. I, I agree. And I, I think if, if really the whole underlying crux of the problem is file size, then you're right. There are file transfer yep. services. Right. That could be utilized, and maybe that's where we need to be focused. Well, right. Because the town of Amherst receives big files too, right? Yeah. right? Bigger files theoretically than we're receiving, yeah. day, right? With our planning department. So, what what yeah. file management service do they use? Right. There you go. Big so bites, why? Are, yeah. So so what? The question is, why are we not also getting a bite of big bucks? <laughs> I know that. Oh, nice oh, for you. Do. Ah. <laughs> well, well, uh, they uh, know, they but they just need to know who we're talking to. Yeah, we're talking to her. Well, but the, the building department. Well, right. well, the building department, I think, does have access to it, don't they? I know Ben sent Ben sent stuff to me through big lights, and I've accessed it. So, you know, the, the ability is there. I think, you know, yeah. you know what? I look forward to the email that I got from I think it's from my teller to explain what they bring because I. I I had asked them, and, you know, then he came back with, well, you know, we have big bites. I said, I understand what you're saying. I said, but I need more information of why. And so then he sent back, and, you know, it, the security and the size and the this and the that. Yeah. All right. So, so why don't we, um, why don't you, we'll just leave it, you're going to forward that email. We yeah. can all look at it, and then we can get back to Dan and Ryder about that. And oh, he's not going to be happy, I'm sure, because we don't pay for, you can't, and the other thing is, too, you can't, you don't want to set up a Gmail account because you have no security control. Right, right. And of course, yeah. And if we shut their server down, then we, we can't get to those. We have to go to access mm -hmm. all of those documents mm -hmm. for FOIL purposes for perpetuity. Mm -hmm. And if right. Gmail decides they're going to sell or whatever, or the server goes down, we just can't do, you have to have it really some echo to your server. Oh, sure. well, so it's. So, but using the big bytes works because the town is a client of our company, and I received a file recently with a data file, and they used big bytes. I pulled it in, I pulled it in their software, and it's fine. So it's we just need a better solution. We said, all right, if you're sending something, here's what you got to do: click this link, yeah, upload your thing, and wait. Yeah, I think that's that's really what it is. It's, it needs to be needs to be made available upon request. Or yeah, exactly. Whatever. That's the way it works. Yeah. So if we need to send I believe, something. 
if you want to send something to be I believe they have to give you a pass. The town has to they, you do. You have to have a pass. So. Yeah. So. And I can I can reach out to them and ask for passwords for for all you guys, and then um, should be set up. Yeah, maybe that's okay. the function. It's easy. And that's what we told him. All right. So what we tell him. Um, so where are we at? Thirty. Like we have some type of a plan for spending this money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it sounds like everybody was okay with that plan. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Starting with the gazebo, right? That's oh yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. So I am going then to just completely table the whole dog park discussion. Then I know I'm going to put that on Monday night's agenda for discussion. But oh, okay. I, so I mean, and I can we can you know I can explain why I'm just just taking that completely off the radar because I don't feel there's not enough support for um, for that moving forward. So there's no point in rehashing it. So um, well, at this point there isn't because we won't have really a new board fully until July. So yeah. um, so you know until then I'm just gonna but it's on it, you'll see it on the next agenda. You know that's because the week before you know, I had to put that on it before today's meeting. So. Um, anything else with parks? I mean, I'm really? good with everything else here. Yeah. Anyone has any questions? We'll move on. Yeah, we, got uh, yeah, we, yeah. Have, we haven't requested that. As a matter of fact, I just said something to Keaton when he was leaving yesterday. I said, We need to get that money. We need oh. to apply for it. So yeah. he's, he's been in contact with the state and okay. yeah, so I, know this I know this. The Dazzy Grant. The Dazzy Grant. You have to spend it to everybody. Oh, okay. I guess. So, yeah, yeah, we don't get enough. Um, parks while I'm thinking about it, uh, Garrison Park Pool. Yeah. We because we typically start staffing and or preparing for that in March, I believe, getting that together. So, we as a board are going to need to decide maybe even before, which is what we did last year, before we even had any state guidelines about closures of pools. We decided as a board that we were going to close, keep the pool closed because of the current climate. So we're probably going to have to make the same decision this year. Um, so just kind of maybe that's something I don't have on work session, but we should probably start discussing that. Um, because, we're, because if there's, I mean, one of the reasons that we did end up closing it too was all the restrictions. Well, that that's what I'm saying. Right. And then to put these on these 18 year old kids that are going to have to argue with these parents. Well, that kid's been in here for two hours. Kick him out. Let my kid come in. You can't put that on YouTube. Well, and so I kind of, and you know, the whole masking and the social distancing, you know, let's just say that is going to be in effect for the summer. So I feel like we should try to come to some conclusion because Kelly would be the one that having to sell this up with hiring. I'm sorry, Corey. Corey would be doing okay. So we, ju I just want to, you know, kind of have our ducks in a row. We're not, you know, we can't wait until May first to make a decision. If we're opening the Garrison Park Pool. We need to start talking about it today and we need to make a decision. And just it's really just a gap at this point, but we need to I think it would be important. And obviously, you know, you're never really under pressure this answer, but it seems like the, the opinions about what good, bad, or indifferent coronavirus related seem to change almost on a daily basis now mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't have a you can't open the theater, but you can open the music park. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you can't, you can't, you, you, COVID is more likely to be contagious after 10 o'clock at a restaurant than just before 10 o'clock, you know? So, like, oh. it, you can't, you can't. That's a bunch of garbage. But well, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and, and well. And it doesn't, it doesn't spread at football games. It doesn't spread at football games. <laughs> and, and especially if the Bills are in the playoffs. Well, yeah. It doesn't, you know. And, and my, <laughs> you know. My, my coworker has a theory, too, that, that uh, COVID only lives about five or six feet above the floor, which is why when you're at a restaurant, you can be seated without your hands. But when you stand up, you got to put your hands down because it's just hovering in the cloud. That's a good theory. Yeah. You know? So, um, I mean, and quite frankly, yeah. 
given the given the irregularity of the information coming out of the governor's office with regards to this topic, you can pretty much put poke holes in all of these things with some level of logic, right? So our decision last year was based on health department guidelines and, and regulations that mm -hmm, right. were absolutely absurd to even mm -hmm. try to implement. Yeah. Right. So then the question becomes, is that I'll reach out to you. Is that the guideline this year? Because if it, if it remains out. as absurd and it's left, it's, it's not as any more viable this year than it was last year. If, on the other hand, it's something dialed back into absurdity, well, then maybe it is more viable. Right. right? We can't really make, we can't flip that coin until we know what we, what right. we have to ask the well, it's, to do. Well, I can tell you right now, if it's the level of absurdity that it is right now, we might as well just say right. the Harrison Park pulls yeah. close. Well, and that's my Because point. it is. Right. And I think the point is, is that Judy can call Monday and I, I can sit here and it's safely say it's, it's going to be that level. Yeah, it's totally good. But yeah. we need to make a decision now. I, so, I so, right. So, like, yeah, so it, we can only make the decision based on information we have at hand. That's correct. That's, that's the forecast of regulation. We're no better off this year to, to facilitate it than we were last year. No. And no. so then, I mean, that's what, we, what we could do, we could go through the process of, of finding employees up. and just, you know, tell them, you know, we don't know for sure the pool will be open, mm -hmm. but if it is, a decision will be made, say, by May 1st. And or May 15th or even June 1st, because our pools don't usually typically open till the end of June. Mm -hmm. And um, wait and see what the final restrictions are going to be before we, you know. That's that's probably the prudence, most prudent. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. I mean, you I end up to that, accommodate it and then back away. Yeah. It, it yeah. was, it was yeah. tough last summer. All those 93 days and this pool sitting in all over, not just ours. I mean, you drive down the 290 and break piece in there. And I spent many of these there as a kid. Did we do So that's one. I mean, we don't even usually put the ad in until mid March. Well, then that's the way that we should go. Let's just approach it like that. Yeah. Let's let's proceed as though we would really like because I would like to see the pool open. Right. So let's proceed in that direction to have it lined up, ready to go. Um, but you know, I I guess I'm just not very optimistic that yeah. anything is really going to change between now and then. But well, maybe open, maybe it will. Maybe you open enough late. Maybe you open. Well, maybe that's why I said we, we need to. If if, if the thought is yeah. being able to open it, like, we have to have our employees already set. Yeah. We have to make sure that we do our our CPR training. Yeah. We do don't line every So time. yeah, because we can't. They can't come to us July first and say, oh, free for all, open your pools. We have right. we have no employees. We, we have, have no training. Right. And how are you going to get people in there for six weeks? Yeah. And I don't know if any kids are going to commit to something that may or may not happen. Well, yeah. Maybe we're looking for jobs elsewhere. Well, well, so that, 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 that might be there's, there's, there's part of the arithmetic though too, right? Is that if we if we go this route and we can't even find the staff, that's another that's thing. another nail in the coffin. Yeah. yeah. But we got to be upfront. You know, we would like yeah. to get open, but at this point, we don't. All right. We have a couple that, a couple, mm -hmm. two or three or four that last year had indicated they wanted to come back. So I would definitely reach out to them first. Well, let's do that. Let's start going in that direction. Some organizations have the same dilemma. Right. Uh, right. right. Yeah. Old, old age, all the boys are looking at that and they are questioning it all. They have no, they have no reason to wait, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Same, same, same thing. Right. I think it depends too on how quickly they can roll up these guys. Yeah. One day, you know, all of a sudden we're going to have so many millions and that's the one. So right. let's see where it goes. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So then page 34 is the one part. Oh, what about you can wrap? Page, um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get there. 34 is. Okay. So 34 is. Okay. So 35, you can wrap. Is I'm good with this. Yeah. I did knock down the um, community events amount because we haven't been using it. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. so I did knock it down. No. Okay. But everything else we left for some reason. $200. Okay. If that we in. get back into the problem. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Um, page 36. <clears throat> Uh, everybody, yeah, the HBC was happy with this and didn't have to bring more. Okay, good. 
Yeah. Are we going to talk about class? Yeah. Okay. So I have three out of the six. Okay. So we got to, are we going to? I already, I already, I already, three addresses? Yeah, I already post, had this conversation with Christine. So she was going to be posing. Okay. Can you also, um, that public hearing for the property that I sent the email? Yeah. I sent that to Christine. So everyone's aware of it. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. Did you that? Did you get back to me? He did. I called him to confirm the date. And okay. so and I sent him and copied him on the email. Um, so he's he's good to go with that. And I have a schedule to call so, for the public hearing. Right. So what will happen is for that for public hearing, um, Mr. Rovino and his wife, I'm guessing too, or uh, will come in in person. And you know, I told him there'll be plenty of room to social distance. And so he'll come in. And then if there's anybody else who wants to speak. We'll have to, um, I don't know, maybe we can fit like two sets of chairs, but if not, we'll have people in the hallway if they want to speak during public hearing, and then they can come and speak in person as well. And then I um, I would like to, you know, have the board make a decision that evening. I see no need to bring people back to hear the decision because all we're encouraging them is people to come back, you know, into yeah. the building. Well, with we, us. Don't, we don't have to make the decision, but. Well, I agree. Close the hearing. You close the hearing. Well, we can close the hearing, but I, I figure I mean, it's one property. If we're, if we're hearing understand. everybody who has to speak about it, why can't we make a decision that time? So we'll see. You know, but yeah. um, um, there's, there's nothing in our culture. I thought we were going to put some money in there because of the air. We moved it. They're not well, that's not in the meeting anymore. house. So page 37 is the meeting house. There are there, um, yeah. celebrations. Yeah, so hold on. So with the meeting oh, house, okay. I don't have any changes. Yeah, okay. I'm, we're just gonna leave that all there. Okay. All right, so then go to celebration. Yeah, okay. My question is answered. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, it just what 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 question is being asked? Mm -hmm. Why did you knock down the two because, because we haven't been using the building and currently we're still not okay. using the building and right now we have a possible two weddings for next year and if we end up needing more maintenance then um you know well we, i mean i guess if, even for the you know, rocking horse i don't think they aren't scheduled for anything until the winter. Okay. Right. So I think we're okay. Let's so see. speaking with that, so did you get the letter out to Rocking Horse? Are, are you working on okay? That's okay. <laughs> just so it's just but I, I wanted to fall through. That's see. fine. It is on my list. That's fine. I have that. Did, 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 did you confirm with those uh, the two weddings? Did we confirm I that did they not, paid the security I, deposit? I, I no. saw that there was a refund on it. Was the one I had talked to. Are somebody? So the other no, two, I, mean, I don't think have put their deposit down, which means they are not confirmed dates. Okay, and the reason I bring that up is I don't know if you all have seen there are new executive orders from Governor Cuomo regarding weddings, and now they are wanting everyone who is in attendance at a wedding to produce a negative COVID test. And if we are hosting weddings at the meeting house, um, it you know especially at the municipality, I asked Judy to reach out to both of these brides. To let them know the regulations because you know it's kind of under our watch now because it's our building and you know well currently the building is closed which they know sure so at the time that the building were to open then we would let them know that any event in this building would need to comply with any new york state right right so so not to digress but so the the executive order is that the guests have to produce a negative COVID test to the pool. Um, well, if the, the first you need to get a permit from the Department of Health. So if you're hosting a wedding this summer, say July 4th, you have to get a, per, a permit from the Department of Health, is my understanding. And then the Department of Health would be regulating that event. And I guess what that, what that would mean is they could come and do like a surprise inspection. Yes. So all the guests, one of the stipulations is, is that your guests all need to provide negative COVID tests um, if they're in attendance with that gathering. So, so if someone from the health department could drop in and everybody has to pull out their phone and show them the email that says they're there. Maybe. I don't know. I don't so know. You have to ask the Department of Health about that. But I, that Interesting. That would be, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, good times. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, we're like, you know, socialist time. Or something. You gotta start that's handing out little pins where you can like. Yeah, you gotta have like a little pin. Red, you're green. like, you know, well, that's 
Well, you know, it's a hard, you know, it's kind of. Maybe I didn't want to be so harsh and say communist. I maybe fascist. I maybe maybe communism is the wrong word. It's a little too too much. But um, you know, I just I I don't know. I guess you know because we're we're renting now our building as municipality. Well, you know, if we're, not, if we're not the if we're not the responsible party, that's what I really want to get down to. Is it the venue's responsibility to have the records of those COVID records for the Correct. individual or the or the family? <clears throat> If it's if it's the individual or the family and all of, and the venue is just a group that they're in. No, I would say the venue needs to be in compliance. Historically, I mean that's what we're seeing with other executive well, boards. Yes, yeah, we, we don't have to we don't have to manage the no. results of those right. Oh no, that's that's we have to manage the, the, the quantity. Venue. Yeah, the right. quantity. The quantity of people. Yeah, normally we're about three hundred. We only have one hundred fifty. Right. We're right. Slime, right? But right. we're not going to we're not going to have someone there saying, yeah. okay, here. But Move right. over, you know, we're not going to, there's not going to be a hands on effort. No, no, it's never be. No, of yeah. course not. But I just think it's a ridiculous test. All of a sudden, now you have to have all of your guests a negative COVID test. I mean, I just intrinsically, I have a real problem with that government outreach, and I'll just say that. Well, it's I do. because out of such big events and meetings, there has been many cases of COVID, unfortunately. People take off their masks. Spider. Yeah, those are the biggest spreaders. Mm -hmm. You know, schools are things like, but these events are, and that's important. Mm -hmm. So I understand that. I do. Well, you know, the, the vaccination rate might might turn yeah. up really dramatic. Just a lot. Save money. Thousand. That was a lot of money for sure. Yeah. My friend, the ice ring. The ice ring. I can get seven thousand. Um, yes, my <laughs> way. <laughs> Okay. You can you can like this right out. Come down the aisle. Yeah, you, well, you still have to get the you still have to show the negative. I know. What is it? What five six part? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, All right. Celebrations. So, so how about great right, under celebrations? What else do we have? Um. So. Okay, let me just look at this. All right, everything is kind of the same. Yep, and everyone's good with that. Sure. Sure. All right, good. Sure. All right. Um, Memorial Day Parade is not happening this year. Right. So, yeah. I think we can reach out. so the next uh, page 39 zoning. Um, I did on the um, advertising because we've been doing a lot more of the code changes and stuff. Okay. Right. So, okay. um, planning and mm -hmm. garbage, um, cycling. The garbage contract is actually up 1231. So, we're extending. So, I, I talked to Linda, and it looks like they're maybe up to a maximum of 5% increase. So, that's what I booked was Good. based on that. And then on the dump fees, I, if you look at the history, we haven't hit 80,000, so I reduced those. Okay, good. Yep, that sounds good. So this is the beautification. This is our work. Well, the committee tells us what they want. Yeah, yeah. this is the one that Deb has. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm fine with all that. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, shade trees, yeah. we already talked about it that day. <clears throat> Flood and erosion, we went through. We're just curious, the state retirement payment this year, do we know what it's going to be yet? Yes, that's what I was thinking about. That's going to be in the fire? Did you guys do that service? That, I don't, yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, what okay. I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where's, what it's did your um, conversations are they on? I don't see anything in there online. For what? Oh. Social conversations. No, they didn't ask me. Okay. 
because I didn't I didn't hear back from them either. I said you guys should put together a budget. So I don't think it's going five hundred. I would assume we'll be able to create a line and add some money. Right. Do they have a Do they have a plan of what they want to do? Basil, our estimated um, payment. Well, this one got canceled. A hundred thirty-six thousand. Got canceled. Got canceled. So, okay. I'm assuming it's probably going to take the form of yeah. some. Okay. So then that gets split between the outreach and maybe some. Yeah. Eighty-five percent. Yeah. Yeah. Meeting the something. Right. Well, I think there were there were something that trying to table at the farmers market at some point to talk about maybe even get more involvement and stuff. Sure. So, so they might you know, they might get a banner and okay. stuff. I think five hundred to do three or two trips to distribute. We we can afford five hundred. Okay, where are this now? We don't have a line. So add in a line for culture conversation for five hundred. Thirty eight. I mean, I, I thought Keaton offered them some really good insight to partner with the school district. Yeah, um, are, are they going to do yeah. that? Oh, yeah, good. Sure. 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 So. Well, okay, so. So that's that's everything, okay. right? So good news. Well. Oh my gosh. Are we still down yeah, no, I wanted. We're gonna. Well, then we'll just hammer on. If everyone can say we'll do the salaries, and we won't need to meet another night back. But we need to go on into executive session for that. Right. I was going to say good news is that based on Cali, we're still 10,250 under. So mm -hmm. the tax bill. Yeah. Can we put that into the dog park sometime? <laughs> <laughs> so our, our, our tax rate for <laughs> nothing else, I'm equalization here still uh, down from last year by 3.6%. Now we're at four dollars fifty three point eight cents. So but that's a hundred percent. I didn't go back and change it to where I would do that. Okay, so yeah. I need, um we need to talk salaries and then we're done. Yes. So we have to, how do we go to the executive session if we want to watch? Um, I have to clean that off. Okay. Is that we're pretty much done? Yeah. Well, we'll do executive session. Right? This one's good. You pick a good year to start. Yeah. Basil and I are going out of the bank. You should say him. Last year was done. Yeah, I know because see that's what the reason why we do it. Okay. This 